first, we invite you to change your screen name to your name, followed by your country. And then please be mindful of the following guidelines for our Zoom meet. First of all, when possible, please keep your cameras on. We would love to see your faces. Second, as a sign of respect for our speakers, please keep your mics muted. Um, if you have any questions or if you have something to say, you're more than welcome to raise your virtual hand and we will get to you. But also, please refrain from posting unnecessary comments in our chat box. And lastly, we, we encourage you to use our emoji reactions to express your appreciation for our panelists and anything else you want to react to. So there, uh, I'm handing it back to you, Fatima. Thank you. I hope all of you are clear now with the Zoom norms. Um, these are some of the reactions that can be used. Uh, make sure you show um, these emojis to uh, show your appreciation towards the people speaking. So um, and we also request you to mute your devices when you are not speaking to avoid disturbances uh, while the other um, panelist is speaking. If you have any other questions or anything else to ask, you can please go ahead now. All right, uh, we will be beginning in about 10 minutes. Until then, um, how again, how have all of you been? Uh, just to remind all of you, we have uh, we will be having cahoots and we will be having uh, a lot of games and little fun um, stretches. All of that, we have a lot of it planned today. So uh, make sure you're there till the end. And um, how have all of you been doing again? I can see many of you. If uh, it's okay if you cannot switch on your video, but it would be great if you could um, uh, unmute and have let's have let's just all have a small conversation together. Hey Fatima, really stoked to be here. Um, I, it, um, I mean, it's really fun to see all of you guys having this uh, amazing virtual background. Uh, who came up with that? I think uh, I think it was I think it was Sanjana. I don't remember, but uh, we were talking about this yesterday. That was when we decided to have this as a background, and I remember we were fighting over what color shirt we had to wear because some of us might have to blend in with the background. So but she was with me saying it's Royce. Um, so yeah, thank you, Royce, for the idea, um, and I think it I think it looks great too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can see uh, Sister Mercy. I think the picture is completely very beautiful and the representation of um, together with today's theme because we say together we can and we have so many different girls of different colors and races together. So I would like to invite Royce to share a few words as to how she got the idea behind the picture and what was her inspiration behind the picture. Thank you, Sanjana. Um, at first, I was really, I, I can't came up with a design, a better design for the, for the thumbnail or the posters that will be posted. When Miss Sashi, um, when Miss Sashi told me that we can come up with our own, I researched up online and I, I'm very, I saw uh, the picture in Pint on Pinterest that there are few girls. Why why can't I um um include it in the poster? Because we are from on other countries and we are in different races. And I know that uh, this poster represents all of us today. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Royce. It's truly a beautiful poster. I I um can I request everybody to appreciate by showing reactions and um symbols given because it truly is so wonderful it and you know all of us here hold so much talent so yeah royce it's really beautiful um sister mercy i can see you here hello sister how are you open, open the open uh, sister can you hear me I am fine. I wish you all the best for all the participants and moderators and panelists. 
you are great and you will do well thank you sister thank you so much anybody else who would like to add in anything or share your thoughts with us sister beena wanting to wish you all all the best god bless thank you thank you so much sister beena Hi girls um all the very best for today's panel i'm super duper excited to to find out what you have in store for us so all thank the you, very best thank you so much thank you so much i uh, really appreciate it hey fatima hi everybody hi so we're really excited to be a part of this today because we've been having a lot of programs and the more programs we have the more we learn not just you know Uh, we learn so many things we learn about togetherness we learn on how to even cooperate from different countries even amidst you know a pandemic as big as this so i'm really excited to have another meeting another opportunity to come together truly yeah thank you for bringing that out um the fact that you know so many of us manage we some people are from india from philippines from indonesia from myanmar from so many places that uh, and from so many places in india uh we have people from balari we have people from bangalore chennai it's just so crazy to see that all of us you know managed to um unite and come together is as one on this forum i think that's one thing that um corona gave to us that you know uh it gave us all of these opportunities because i think if we didn't have it uh if we didn't have the virus i don't think we would have had all of these opportunities um put forth for us and you know we have had so many sessions it's just so wonderful that we have come together and learned so much together so yeah thank you smriti and also smriti is a wonderful singer and smriti and her sister smita they are both wonderful singers and we have a, a small surprise performance at the end of the session so make sure you are there till the end to uh, witness both of them perform wonderfully anybody else who would like to add any thoughts that they have Sense I'm Sister Suchana from Sri Lanka. Uh, all the best. Really, we are so proud of you to see that as a whole Good Shepherd family and Shepherdians. Uh, all the best for everybody, and thank you all who really helped to come to this uh, event. And also, really, we are proud of you. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you so much. This uh, event, so proud of you. Um, thank you, God bless you. It really means a lot to us. We make we will we hope that. Um, we do well and we make all of uh, all of you proud uh, sister winnie fred it's so good to see you uh, uh, sister winnie fred it's so good to see you i would here. like to How welcome you, sister, sister yeah. winnie fred on behalf of all of us she is the representative um, good of good evening. shepherd at the united nations and i have had the yeah. privilege of knowing her and i would like to welcome her among us today welcome hope uh, good morning to uh, everybody in yes go ahead uh, good morning or afternoon i don't know what it is in in asia pacific and it is uh, a marvelous moment to see so many uh, girls and uh, young women on this call uh, advocating on your own behalf uh, with your own voice and your own agency so congratulations thank you so much sister it's wonderful that we have you here with us today um, i would also like to add that it's super early for sister Right. So, um, admire the taking so much effort yesterday. True. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Um, Isabel. Um, yes. How are the? Excuse. Could you repeat that? Your audio is a bit. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? You're better. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's just have a conversation. I think we're set to begin in another two minutes. Okay. Um, if I'm not wrong, is there a problem with the audio? Again, again, again. 
Is there a problem with the audio? I think I can hear an echo. It's not an echo. It's a bit choppy. Was that just me? Um. Okay. Is it fine now? Oh yeah. Can I get a thumbs up? All right. I think um, after all the small conversations, we are set mm -hmm. to begin now. Okay. Um, okay. Never before have we had, perhaps never again, shall we have such an opportunity. Let us not allow it to pass, therefore, without making the holiest use of it. This quote of St. John Hughes holds such truth because never again will we have this exact moment in our lives. And that is why today we come together as one force to seize the opportunity, choosing to challenge and reinvent the future of the girls. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and warm welcome to the sisters and partners in mission of the Good Shepherd Global Family. Particularly the persons gathered here in this virtual space, the young panelists from Myanmar, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, and India, all daughters of Good Shepherd. And to all the extended families watching this program online, my hearty welcome. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better, it's not. Quote by Dr. Sears. Thank you for caring an awful lot and showing up today. I deem a great honor to introduce the team of hosts who will be running this event for the next few hours. We are six Good Shepherd siblings from the sister schools in India and Philippines, joyously celebrating our family ties and enlarging the circle to welcome more. We will introduce each other now. Let me say my welcome bienvenue in the language of our mother foundress. Here is Sanjana from Chennai, India. She talks and talks and does share a lot of passion for justice, especially to women and children. Thank you, Fatima, and namaste to everybody here. I'd like to welcome Jared, who is from St. Bridget's School, Philippines. She has a lot of passion for reading, writing, and for advocacy. Mabuhay at maligayang pagbati sa inyong lahat. I am delighted to introduce Khadija, who is from St. Philomena School, Bellary, India. Thank you, Jared. Mingala Basin, everyone. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing fine. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mamata from Sacred Heart School, Bangalore, India. Yes, she's passionate about raising her voice for what matters that I've often not spoken about in the public eye. Thank you so much, Khadija. I'm so pleased to introduce Isabel from St. Bridget School, Quezon City, Philippines. She loves reading and has a wild imagination and is curious about how the society works. Thank you, Mamata. Sadarin Piliganimu. And I'm so delighted to introduce my Good Shepherd sibling from Chennai, India, Fatima. Thank you, Isabel. As we ready to commence this wonderful journey of celebrating fellowship, listening to each other's whispers and voices, building bridges, fostering relationships, we together we can. I invite each one of us to center ourselves acknowledge our thoughts and presence and be thankful for what we have today. You are welcome to be seated in a comfortable posture, feet resting gently on the ground, the very earth which is connecting the infinite roots below us across all the continents. Feel the connection. You may lower your gaze as I lead you through one or two inhalations. Shift your attention to your breath as you inhale the beauty of new promise which lies before us and gently exhale all your tensions. Once again, inhale new life and breath, gently exhale and relax. Shift your attention to your heart and unlock it. May it remain open 
to all that this space has to offer. I now request you to shift your attention to the head and the sky which is open above us all. The vast sky with the bright star in some places where we are now and the other parts where there is a lovely starlit sky. The great banner which envelops and unites all of us as a single family. How blessed we are to come together. At this moment, I invite us to observe one minute silence as we remember all the women and children who are suffering due to sickness, poverty, war and unrest, especially our brethren who are fighting for justice and democracy in Myanmar. We unite with all of you in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Fatima, for helping us center ourselves before we begin our journey today. The theme for this panel discussion is Together We Can. So you might be asking what lies ahead for the day. Be mindful that we are using Malaysian time. 1.30 to 2 o'clock, we have our welcome and overview, which is happening right now. Uh, 2 o'clock to 4.30 and 5 o'clock to 6.30, we will be having our two panel discussions. The first one about the impact of COVID-19 on girls, and the second one about bodily autonomy and sexual health and reproductive health. 4.30 to 5 o'clock, that's 30 minutes between our discussions. We will be having games and um, videos, so it's a lot of fun stuff happening there. Be sure to check it out. And finally, 6.30 to 7 o'clock, we will be closing. It is interesting that we will hear voices from girls from five countries in Asia Pacific, all of whom have dialed in from their locations at India, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, Myanmar, and Indonesia. And of course, the support and solidarity of all the Good Shepherd folks from around the world. Here is what we hope to achieve during this time together. Our goal is to provide a safe space for the girls to redesign their future. And our objectives are, of course, to celebrate the Good Shepherd family bonds, to conduct panel discussions, to open the minds of girls and encourage them to voice out, and to create the ground for fostering relationships that encourage girls to empower each other. Thank you, Isabel. I hope all of you now have an overview understanding of today's event and how we will proceed. As we begin to learn and grow together in our journey for change, let's first hear the voices of the future pillars of our generation from Indonesia and hear their ideas and thoughts for the vision they have for their future. Tikus 
kecil kan cuma bilang kejadiannya itu doang kadang-kadang bilang sama diri sendiri tapi tetap semangat harus semangat mau dibilang aja gitu biar nggak ngakuin kekerasan gitu kalau bunda biar bunda itu nggak kayak kayak sekarang gitu ya nggak cuma manfaatin nggak cuma habisin uang kayak gitu untuk yang lain-lain mending ke anak-anak apa ke keluarga itu kan lebih kan lebih baik aku nggak mau kena kekerasan ingin diajak lagi dan jalanin ke pantai ya biar lebih sayang lagi kanunya yang udah ada sekarang nah, aku berharap semoga aja kalau pas papa pergi pergi gini masih ada atas nama nggak kekurangan dari corona terima kasih tuh merawat aku dari kecil kalau ayah aku pengen lihat mukanya buat mereka yang nggak punya teman dan berkata pergi keluar jalan-jalan cari teman tetap semangat aja sih mesti ada jalannya tetap semangat di luar sana masih banyak yang menyayangi kita kita bekerja keras tetap kuat aja mesti pasti ada Tuhan Wow, such powerful and stirring thoughts as Misashi said in the chat box. It's so amazing to see um, such young children, girls and boys, to share such um, powerful thoughts. And you know, when they, when they, when they have a vision for their future, and you know how they speak is so important because they will be the future pillars of um, our generation. So it's truly amazing to watch um, these children and. Um, girls and boys speak up on what they want and what they want from their parents, from their society, from their environment. It really is a really powerful message. Let's now watch another short documentary video from India, where we witness how these powerful young girls voice out and end the cycle of violence in their society. My family traveled to our hometown, but I had periods. Just because I had periods, I was restricted from entering inside the house. He not to touch anything and made me to sleep outside the house in the veranda. Considered my pain and periods unpure. I had no proper sanitary facilities. I have to bath in a separate place, excluding the bathrooms other people used. Overburdened with uh, all the household work. Also, I have to take care of my brother and help him to study. And with all this, I have to work on on my studies also. Due to this, I will find difficult and to manage everything. But the men will not take any equal share in the household. And also, they will restrict me to not to be in the living room when any guest come to my house. We to stay locked inside the room. Until the guests leave the house. But sadly, it's not only the story of this girl. There are many places yet where female infanticide is still in practice, and it's unreportedly kept in silence. When child labor itself is crucial, girls often start working earlier than boys. Although laws are against child marriage, this practice still remains widespread. 70% of human trafficking victims are females. Approximately 200 million girls and women alive today have undergone female genital mutilation. About 132 million girls are out of schools. Sexual, emotional, or psychological violence are exposed on girls that cause depression and leads to suicides. Menstruating women and girls are often being denied the use of water and sanitation facilities, and in some cases, even excluded from homes. How can someone abuse a girl child? But I would ask, how? can so many good people look at it and stay quiet by still blaming the victim that she wasn't wearing proper clothes, she was going wrong, she was 
hi she was that and she was this this is all not proper this is this can't be questioned like to the victim you are supposed to be a part of it and try helping the victim to come out of this. In order to end the cycle of violence, I think we need to go beyond our consideration. The responsibility to equip a girl child with skills and knowledge and every person should mold a girl child with girl power and confidence. I take gender equality seriously but there are so many girls out there who aren't provided with freedom. It's just unfair to restrict girls by telling them stay indoors or by blaming them for what they wear. Instead, we need to create our awareness among the young boys and the men to create a safe environment for the girls so that they can feel to go any to make them understand about gender equality and that every girl deserves anything and everything she wants. Should be her choice before anyone else. Should teach them how to be strong, how to be brave in today's world. Give them the knowledge about self-defense and how to protect herself from any situation. The right to life is never questioned by anybody. I mean, no one ever justifies why is that you have a right now. Then why is there ignorance and conditions for girls to live their own lives with their own dreams and wishes? Be it the education, the appearance, the freedom, or even the safety of a girl child. It's not just a message, slogan, or poster stating save a girl child. What do you exactly mean? Whom are you telling it to? Who is going to save the girl child and whom are you going to save the girl child from? When the population is so ignorant to its existence, people just walk out. Even when an abuse or harassment is being exposed on a girl, people walk out, stating why unwanted trap for us. Is that the way we act? Would we do that if the victim is our own mother, daughter, sister or be it your wife? We all are responsible for the violence being expressed on girls and women. But until each and every individual takes the responsibility and initiative to stop those little things taking place, nothing can actually be changed. That was really wonderful, wasn't it? As, they, um, as there's this quote which says, protect your daughters, um, I think now it's, it's been changed to educate your sons. So before you tell your daughter you put to protect herself, first educate your son to, not, um, to, to know what's right and wrong, to know what he should do and what he shouldn't. And what the need for education, uh, educating the boys on these issues is really important because if they don't know what is right or wrong, they will feel free to do what they please. And that is where we have to come in and um, tell them that this is what should be done. So I think in this video, it clearly explains that um, the violence against the girls is also because of the ignorance of the boys and the, how they are not being educated properly and well. It takes great courage to voice out and on issues and speak up on matters that affect you in your own society and, your in, and in your own homes. And to watch them speak out is truly inspiring because it is not easy when you have to speak out on something that um, is happening to you in your own home or in your own society. And yeah, watching them truly, I think, inspired me a lot. Thank you, Fatima. That was well said. So now, as we make a choice to challenge the mindsets and seek that girls deserve a seat at the table where their perspectives and contributions are equally valued, not in spite of, but because of their unique identity and background, my voice matters and so does yours. I invite you to share your voice in this Mentimeter, the link for which will be posted in the chat box. For all of you who are streaming on YouTube, don't worry, the link will also be posted there. Uh, I hope the link is accessible to all of you. Please give me a thumbs up to know that uh, you're able to access the link. Thank you. Okay. If you've opened the link, you will see that there is this question. For you, what is girl empowerment? So we have three boxes here. You can submit multiple answers. So just enter your answer. You can have up to three and 
just press submit when you're done. You can submit as many responses um, as you please. Um, make sure you put in whatever you feel is a uh, girl empowerment from your side. What is the one word that uh, you feel associates to girl empowerment? It doesn't have to be just one word. It can be a phrase or a sentence or any saying. We look forward to hearing from you. I hope the people on YouTube can access it as well because the link has been posted there too. Oh, wow. here we are. We have a word cloud. It's there's a lot of answers. I'm seeing education, freedom, equality, being strong, building resilience. Okay, what else? High sense of self-worth, that's important. Assert her rights. She has to be courageous. Be bold. Justice. I'm seeing a lot of very good ideas here. So the ones which are repeated will appear uh, more big. So the words education, freedom, speaking up, equality, being strong, all of these words are repeated. Um, and it is great to see that so many of us um, have these words as what we associate to girl empowerment because it's so sad that we still need freedom. I can see the word freedom there and you know we already have uh, the right to freedom but we still have to fight for it and yeah it's so crazy to see that all of this is still we're still fighting for it in till in 2021. Building resilience, courageous. It also says here, being supportive. Yes, it's important to support our girls. What else? Being supportive is just does not just mean to support the to support the cause, but it also means to support the girls in your own homes and societies. Um, being supportive to their ideas, being uh, open to their thoughts and listening to their thoughts and uh, what they have to say and not um, not just you know shushing them and um, that is what it means to being supportive not just not just supporting the cause but also actually um, being there for the girls in your own homes and societies we have we have had 56 responses so far it's great to see that many of you uh, all of you can access it come on I think we can have some more responses on there. We're up to 64 now. That's actually a lot. What else is it? Voices to be heard. Yes, exactly. I feel like there's a need for us as we speak up to be heard and actively supported because it's not always that, you know, even though people listen to you, not everyone enacts what you say. <laughs> All right, so that was a very beautiful word cloud and it was amazing to see so many responses and um, equality, freedom, being supportive, voicing out, being resilient, all of that stuff. Uh, it's nice to know that all of us share the one idea of to being together and um, one idea of girl empowerment and girl freedom. Um, again, I request all of you to please mute. All right, so thank you. Um, I thank all of you for sharing your voices as um, as I want all of you to know that each, each one of your voice is extremely important and it is needed if we want to achieve change. So thank you so much for sharing your voices and speaking out. We have now arrived at the most awaited part of today's event. It is time for the panel discussion. So buckle up and get ready to explore and learn 
about some of the grappling issues that we face in our lives and in our societies. I now hand it over to Maumita and Khadija, the moderators of the, the moderators of the panel to lead the discussion. Over to them. Thank you, Fatima. We have all been through this pandemic together. For some of us, it has been a good one. But for the rest of us, we faced so many problems. We were in social isolation for such a long time that many of us lost the pace of things. We went through mental and physical stresses and had so many fears. When the lockdown happened, it was like the world came to a standstill. The time stopped, taught itself, and moved on to a completely different stage, which ended all our old ways, course of actions, and methods. We are, or will be, going through the most radical change the world has ever seen, and we are justly excited, heartbroken, and hopeful at the same time. The welfare of women and children, especially that of the girl child, has remained a tremendously pressing problem on the governments of collective humanity for over a decade. And the recent and ongoing pandemic has only caused this situation to worsen, subjecting them to depression, anxiety, and many other psychological and physical problems. Our panelists are here today to give us a deeper insight into these issues. Khadija and I will be moderating today's discussion and we'll be taking you through a thought-provoking and enriching discussion. So fasten your seatbelts and hold on. So let's welcome a warm, let's extend our warm welcome to all the panelists today. Now over to Khadija to introduce each of our panelists. Thank you, Mamata. We've got, uh, we have six panelists for today, the first panel. It is Marzin Marway from Myanmar. We've got Sabia from Mysore, India. And we've got Royce from Philippines. We've also got Rachel Kure from Sri Lanka, Rudvi from Parjat, India. And last but not the least, Margaret from Indonesia. Welcome, all of you. So, how is everyone doing today? I'm doing really fine today. I'm very excited. So, how are y'all doing? We're all good, Subia. Thank you. How are you, Zinma? Hello, everyone. Good to see you this time. Good to see you too. Great. Margaret, how about you? How are you doing? Are you fine? That's very lovely to have you here. So, how is Royce and Rudvi? Doing fine, doing great, actually. I'm doing great. Amazing. Rachel, what about you? I'm doing great, thank you. That's amazing. So, let's begin with our fun. So, on that note, let's begin with our very first panelist of the day. Our very first panelist is Zinma Wei from Myanmar. She's a 17 year old and a student of grade 10. She's here with us today of how powerful women and girls are. The stage is now all yours, Zinma Wei. Let your sparks fly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to everyone. I would like to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to speak on this panel. And uh, I'm going to share about the uh, impact of COVID-19 on, based on her experience. My name is Zama Tui. I live in Majivan village, Tayavadi, Tongze, Myanmar. I'm 17 years old. 
I'm right now attending in grade 10 in basic education high school patrol division, Myanmar. The school is stopped now, and all the studies are ceased due to COVID 19. We stay at home most of the time and need serious precaution if we go out. Our school can't provide online classes like other schools. We students can neither meet each other nor share our knowledge. Therefore, at present, I'm not doing household. We Myanmar people are proud to be a house for. Likewise, we Burmese children are considered docile and grateful people by obeying to the parents' words, doing household work, and taking responsibility whatever need to be done in the house. I sometimes feel that my rights are omitted and ignored, and my decisions are neglected. Because, because I need to be aware of doing the right things, what my guardian wants. I feel hopeless to express my insights and creativity sometimes. Majority of the parents in my village are weak and uneducated to encourage and help us develop. Especially my village has the nature of blind obedience to the parents, blind obedience to the parents whatever they decide and arrange. That is why my strong desire is to see my village full of educated and skillful young generations who can build peaceful and just environment. I have a lot of free time now, so I become idle since I have no school studies. I don't want to read nor learn any knowledge and want to spend on phone always. I give more time on internet and phone, and I am addicted to it gradually. My friends are getting married at young age after having affairs through social media, and they can't complete their education. There is no guarantee that when will the pandemic be stopped. So I am also lost and I don't know where I am going to. I feel that I am on the edge and hopeless. I am discouraged. Many girls left schools and begin to work. The pandemic causes them a hardship situation crisis. Many 
The parents depends on their children blame and grow impatient with them. Because of their complaining and blaming, we are stressful and depressed, and some even committed suicide. The pandemic just brings us a miserable state. On the other hand, I feel that it is very important for us strong amid the hardship, and I also believe I can and must try to overcome this trial. The mama so in it does lay out she by Chama appear or Chama at the Saturn Mabe, so Madavare, Uchama at the Sakonane, Kobe Kala Dreamabe, Chama me so Madaga. Chamane, Chamani Madia, Susuka Niote, Changa. I have four family members in my family. My dad passed away when I was thirteen. Recently, my mom died during COVID 19 pandemic. Now, only my younger sister and me are in the family. Hey, Lord. I don't know what I'm going to do at present. My mind is full of various thoughts. Will my sister and me join the school when we open? Or do I need to work for a daily expense? Or what can I do now? I want to finish my school first. We grow some vegetables in order to lessen daily expense and share with neighbors when we have extra. English Meanwhile, I am learning English speaking and practice my pronunciation through English lesson on TV channel. Also, I am polishing my lesson of matriculations. I will also try my best to learn handicraft well, handicraft as well, which I love to do. Though I am unsure where will the pandemic be ended, I am learning my any knowledge which can improve my life. There is a Burmese say, proverb saying, be zealous when the time is yours. It is a great loss when my precious man left me in this hardship moment of COVID, but I will not lose my hope. I will try my very best to stand on my own and for my sisters. My confidence will be my energy, so fighting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Before moving on to our next panelist, I'd like to remind you all to leave your questions in the chat box or in the comment section if you're viewing it through YouTube. Our next panelist of the day is Subia. Subia is a student of Good Shepherd School at Mysore, India. A grade nine student, this promising 15 year old is a leader in her mind. With a sympathizing smile and an ever extended helping hand, she's also a great friend and guide. Let's extend our warm welcome to Subia. Now over to Subia, but wait, like Zinmar Ray had quoted, be zealous of your time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I raise my voice, not so I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. We cannot succeed when half of us are held back. By Malala Yousafzai, a warm welcome to Asia Pacific 
and all those who are listening to me. Today, I'm standing as the voice of many girls who are unable to raise their voices due to the pressure and stress exerted on them by their family members and fear of the society. Experiences of my friends, my relatives, people of my locality, and my own experience during this COVID. According to my experience, some of the positive impacts of COVID-19 were, it helped me to spend my time with my family members, which I was not able to do during my school days. I also came to know about the importance of my mother and her work. I realized how much she does for me every day. I was able to understand the growth and development of the technology. During this COVID-19, I also learned how to improve my hygiene. So these were some of the positive impacts of mine during this COVID-19 lockdown. But there were some girls who faced many challenges during this COVID-19 lockdown. Girls, particularly from rural communities, are affected by the outbreak of pandemic. Now, I am going to share some of the negative experiences of mine during this COVID-19 lockdown. Women and girls were harassed both mentally and physically in their homes. This was the incident that took place with one whom I know personally was forcefully married by her brothers during this lockdown because their father died of COVID-19. And she became a huge responsibility for her brothers. From this incident, there are chances for girls to get into depression and even commit suicide. If they are forced to do something they are not in favor of. During this pandemic, over 11% of women have committed suicide due to depression. Many girls were married even before they were mentally ready for it. During this pandemic, over 11% of women and 2.5 million girl children across the world have been married. Pandemic also affected hugely on education of girl children because many of the parents in my locality, sellers, street vendors, auto drivers, etc., were unable to fetch any income. One of the incidents that took place in my locality was that a milkman sold his cows to get a smartphone for his daughter. Every girl in every country of India must have a father like him who struggles to educate a daughter. Now, I am going to share some of my own difficulties during this lockdown. One of my relatives passed away due to COVID-19, leaving her two sons behind. This incident disturbed me mentally and I fell ill. Then I was treated in a hospital. There I met a doctor who made me strong both mentally and physically. He also told me, if you want to be a successful person in life, you must be bold enough to face any situation and challenges of life. In turn, I started advising others how to be strong and positive in life. So these were some of my incidents, but there are still some women and girls suffering from child trafficking, honor killings, female infanticide all over India. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, emerging data and reports have shown that all types of violence, particularly Domestic violence has intensified. Government should reassure that gender-based violence will not be tolerated. Police and justice institutions 
must stand for the cause of women and protect their rights. In my school, that is my headmistress, my teachers and my friends are spreading awareness on protection of girl children and their rights. I wish to see a gender discrimination free India, a society free of child marriage. No women must be harassed mentally. There are many responsibilities of mine as a student. So firstly, I like to take initiative to form groups where we can go for a campaign to fight against discrimination done to women and girls. Secondly, I want to be a child activist who stands for the causes of women and protect their rights. Finally, later on in my life, I would like to form organizations that stands for the cause of women and supports their education. And I believe that together we can. Thank you. Thank you, Subia, for being there for people in times of need. Keep spreading the knowledge and faith that you are blessed with. And I think it's so true that we all tend to need a helping hand or a force sometimes. Thank you once again for your valuable insights on the topic. Now our Thanks. next is Royce, a 17 year old from Philippines, who is here to share her shift in her perception of herself as more important than what others think or what others perceive her to be. She also talks about happiness and self, what self image are to her. Now, without any more spoilers, let's welcome Royce. Over to you, Royce, take it away. Thank you, Lamita, for the warm welcome. Delightful day to all. I'm Royce Julia Angie Cuervo, a 17-year-old student of St. Bridget School of Quezon City, Philippines. And I am here to share a phase in my life where I found myself. The previous year up to this date has been tough for all of us. COVID-19 was declared a worldwide pandemic and has confounded us. Many Filipinos have lost their jobs and citizens of all ages have become vulnerable in terms of their physical and mental health. New protocols were implemented and the world we live in change. As a teenager, I am used to being sociable. I go out with my friends and spend time with the people around me. I know that meeting people and being able to spend time with them is a sense of worth that I have. Being in quarantine and being at home 24-7 is hard. For me, having other people beside me makes me confident. But as the pandemic continued, the social activities that I used to do stopped. I felt like I was caged in a life that I was not used to. And that time, I felt like I was losing people one by one. As online classes started, knowing that I was not as academically inclined as others, I felt like I was missing out more. My confidence was grounded on what I do and who I'm with. And at that time, I thought that the meaning of being a woman is having a good reputation, being sociable, and being admired by men. I started this school year with a lot of trials within myself. Soon enough, I started to experience anxiety. I was told by someone that I was just an average student. That person made me think that I was shallow. Along with that thinking, this adjustment to the new normal made me feel frustrated and devastated. I was aiming for good grades because I thought that through grades, I will regain the reputation that I have. Uncaring about myself, I forced myself to my limits. While trying to focus on my studies, I had to take care of my sisters despite of the heavy workload. This took a toll on my body. I became sleep deprived and I lost a lot of weight. I never thought that I would never be under pressure. The adjustment of the new setup gave me a hard time making time for myself, which led to mental issues. During quarantine, it came to a point where I asked myself, what am I doing to myself? Who am I without my image? Who am I living for? The pandemic pushed everyone to isolation, but it made me realize things that matter. 
those questions made me realize that my life is mine. The things that people say don't matter. The important thing is, you need to love yourself before anything else. It is one way to help you be confident. People will always have something to say about the clothes you wear, the things we use, and the things we do. Instead of what we should think about is our own happiness and passion. I realize that accepting my flaws and being who I am is also a way to help me inspire other people. I became sensitive to the people around me and I tried to share my story for them to be inspired. Our school, St. Bridget School of Quezon City and my organization, SBS Edeniale, made me see things beyond my own experiences. They gave me the right path to fight for the girls who are doubting themselves and are being discriminated against, violate, violated, and abused. The pandemic opened my eyes to girls' different experiences in social media. I became more open to society about this manner and decided to join var various movements to also share my own story. In that way, I know that I can help other girls who are having a hard time finding their true selves or finding comfort from their own experiences. I can say that, that, are, that there are days that this seems to be hard as a girl. People look down on girls and women who have no reputation have low skill levels, among others. Even in this pandemic, some people take advantage of us and people blame us for being ourselves, for being a girl or for being a woman. Girls are downgraded and discriminated against, especially when society does not see the things they want to see. Due to this, most of us were ashamed in social media. And this became more apparent since the pandemic pushed us to interact online. However, despite people's opinions and judgments, I learned to love myself more. In my moments of contemplation during quarantine, I realized that there are more reasons to rise above. We are the slightest hope that the nation needs, and we don't have to prove anything so that the people would love us. Let's help each other break the judgments and mindsets of others. The pandemic cannot stop us girls from making the world a better one. That's all, thank you. Very we do all to the power to bring change into this world. I think it is so true where all of us have, have been in a position where we question the direction of our life. But I'm sure your experience is having some Good luck. Hey, Mamata, you're on mute. And if, uh, can I please request you to speak again? Uh, we couldn't hear you. All right, sorry. Thank you, Royce, for your discernment on the topic. Very amply said. Royce, we, uh, we all believe that we all do possess the power to bring change into this world. I think it is so true where all of us have been in a position where we question the direction of our lives. But I'm sure your experience of having found your self-worth within you inspires other women and girls in the same situation to find their direction as well. Good luck and thank you once again. Now time for a round of questions. The very first question goes to Zinmawe. Zinmawe, how do you plan to change the situation in your village? ไม่ก็ก็ก็ใช้มาตาไม่ก็ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่
First of all, I will definitely follow the restrictions to protect myself. I believe I need to protect myself so that I can also protect my family members, friends, and people in the surrounding area. Second, health knowledge is poor in my community. That is why I will begin with myself and also call my friends and classmates to join with me for this awareness. Third, I will practice keep clean environment. Last, to lessen stress, I will also do physical exercise with friends and also find time to read interesting books. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Zinmawe, for your insight on the topic. Our next question is for Subia. Subia, how do you plan on being the voice of the unheard? Thank you, Mamita. My plans for being the voice of the unheard is, I call upon all governments to ensure free and compulsory education to every girl in the world. I want to be a child activist who stands for the causes of women and protect their rights. I call upon all my sisters around the world to be brave and to understand the strength within them and full of potential. I believe in the strength of my words and I'm sure that my words will work on making girls free and I just, I want to be the voice to change this world. Thank you. Thank you, Subia, for your discernment on the topic. Our next question is to Royce. Royce, how do you plan on bringing a shift in the labeling culture? As a girl who, er who already experienced labeling, I can say that it feels bad having those people around you think that way. And the least thing that I can do is be there for the people who are being labeled and change their mindset that we are better than this, that we are better from what they're implying us. And as for those people who are labeling, I can educate them and respectfully say or correct them that what they're doing is wrong. That's all. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you once again. Now over to Khadija to take us through the remaining panelists. Over to you, Khadija. Thank you so much, Mamada. Amazing views and insights from the two of them. And it shows how all of us are so different and have vast thinking capacities. It's what makes each of us different from the other. And it is so amazing that we are all so connected and we can totally relate to what each of us say. But hold on to your seats, everyone. We've still got more in store for you. And now, let's welcome our fourth panelist of the session, Rachel Kure from Sri Lanka, a standard British convent in Colombo. Let's hear our question to express on her COVID experience. Over to you, Rachel, the stage is yours. Thank you, Khadija. Hello, everyone. I'm Rachel Kure from Sri Lanka. Let me speak a few words on how COVID-19 has affected me personally. In terms of education, we are all now following lessons online. Though it does have a few perks, the fact that there's barely any interaction with my fellow classmates has been one of the hardest challenges for me so far. One significant change I see in myself due to COVID-19 is how lazy I've become. I don't even laugh as loud as I used to where are my friends. It's not the same as a video call every other day. Prior to COVID-19, I was actively involved in many extracurricular activities, including swimming. So I considered myself busy and fit. But now I can't even remember what it's like to swim in a pool until I'm exhausted or what it's like to organize activities for the clubs that I was a part of in school or to come home late after my tuition classes. It really is very sad. I miss spending time with my friends. I miss the games that we used to play. I miss sharing our lunch boxes. Even the minor things that used to irritate me about some of my friends, well, even those I miss now. All the fun times seem to be a warm, distant memory. Now for my home life. I'm one of the lucky ones. Being the only child, 
All I ever had to do was ask and I received, within reason of course. I have had the utmost support from my parents, though this is not the case for everyone. There have been cases in some families where the primary breadwinner has lost their job and the children had to change schools or where the level of domestic violence has increased, causing trauma to the young children. Then there are those who haven't been able to join for lessons simply because their parents believe that online learning is unsuccessful and they're too stubborn to make room for change. Having said this, being home 24 seven is not a walk in the park. When I was in school, in between lessons, when we got a break, I used to spend my time with my friends. But now, if my mother catches me look, looking remotely unoccupied, I am dragged to do some household chore or help out with something. Where is the fun and relaxation in that? My father, on the other hand, will come for a chat every time he's not in a meeting. Sometimes I wonder which of these I could pick over, a face-to-face -face chat with my friends. Don't get me wrong, I love my parents. And regardless of these little discomforts, it has been wonderful to actually get to know them. Now we have most of our meals together, which was never the case. Before COVID-19, I was constantly busy with studies, extracurricular activities, and barely at home. So I didn't actually get the chance to see what wonderful people my parents were, how interesting and knowledgeable they are, and mostly how hard they work to give me the carefree lifestyle that I enjoy. It has been a hard few months, my last year in school, which should have ideally been the best year of my young life. Let me conclude by saying that while being grateful for surviving the pandemic, I am hopeful for a better tomorrow, a tomorrow that is free of sickness, free of loneliness, and hope for a happier and content times. Thank you. Before the resource, just a minute, Khadija, before we continue, I would just like to interrupt and say that we will be muting all participants now and only the co-hosts will be uh, able to mute. So uh, all of you will be muted now. And if you need to speak, the co-host, please unmute. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. And yeah, I'm sure all of us. Khadija, Khadija, uh, please unmute. I'm sorry for that. Um, thank you so much, Rachel. And yeah, I'm sure all of us had similar experiences. And I myself, though I'm not an only child, but still I'm so lucky to be the most loved at home. But not all of us were happy at home. Some of us also faced a lot of problems. Yeah, we were just as upset with our online issues and we missed our friends. But we still got to spend a great deal of time with family and got to know them well. In contradiction to it, many of us also face a lot of problems with our family. And as we were idling at home, it made the parents of students from poorer backgrounds question the need for education as something not required for the girls, which in turn made us realize and question how we will change that mindset of people. And here is with me, a great ten student of Good Shepherd Convent School, Kajal, India, who explains her stand on this, will be also shares that she expresses herself without the fear of being judged for who she is. The stage is yours, Rudvi. A pleasant day to all. Myself, Rudvi. I'm in class 10th of Good Shepherd Convent School, Kajal. And I'd like to express myself on these sensitive topics. Also, I like to know others' opinions on them. That is why I'm here today. So it's been a year since COVID-19 started. And uh, throughout the year, it decided to be the hero of my story. But there were some times when it started playing the role of the villain. Saying that Corona somewhat changed me would be an understatement because it really hit me like a ton of bricks. My mindset, my outlook towards the world and towards the people around me is completely changed. My relationship with my friends and family is improving because 
to be a better person uh because now when i look back i realize that i've been very mean and rude to them i know there's there uh, there's no other place like home but i hated it at home because uh the only topics which were being discussed were about uh, my exams my low grades my lack of concentration in online classes and of course my weight i'd find every other opportunity to get out of the house i wanted to be at peace i was i was fed up of it all but my sister wouldn't leave me alone she's 3 years older but sometimes i just couldn't be patient with her with all the things going on in my head uh, uh there were times when she was just trying to play with me but uh, that uh, i behaved very badly with her social media influenced me to bring about an awareness in myself so uh, the type of content i was surfing through help me open it made me question my behavior my mental health was degrading day by day and social media helped me to stay away from these things and these things impacted my education as well i could not focus on my studies i could not concentrate at all there were many online exams conducted but uh, i never wrote them with complete honesty i copied or uh, i'd find some or the other way to, to cheat spite of doing that my grades were very low which had upset my parents and uh, they used to and scold me a lot frequently uh, and my mind used to be occupied with negative thoughts constantly i could not think straight uh it was like i was literally noticing that i was becoming lethargic and my energy levels were going down and down my periods they did not cause me any physical pain they definitely added to the mood swings for about 3 to 4 months i have been getting my periods uh every 15 days and uh, uh because of which i used to lose my motivation very quickly i'd uh, obsess uh, on i'd make a fuss about small problems and then end up having a breakdown i couldn't sleep at night my mom used to scold me for that but also i couldn't help i was getting these violent and uh, disturbing nightmares which i couldn't even imagine that uh, i could do Uh, in my nightmares some sometimes i would uh, jump off a building or uh, sometimes i would try to uh, drown myself to death and apart from my mental health my physical health is also not the best i have put on weight and uh, people have been commenting on it which has made me insecure but uh, i have started participating in an online forum which puts light upon some neglected unaddressed and sensitive topics it helps me to express myself more and uh, through which i have learned to become more positive about life i used to think that choosing or deciding or what uh, on my career is but that one conversation with my friend was like the ice breaker because she told me that a cord her parents were questioning her need for education because according to them uh, she just has to grow up get married and then work in the kitchen that is her life that is when i got to know that uh, the purpose of my existence that this is the purpose of my existence i ca- i cannot sit quiet or be selfish knowing that even if i am not but someone else is going through this that they shouldn't so a uh, corona uh, made me experience a lot of things and then uh, taught me the life lessons so earning for myself and stretching a helping hand for 
people in need is the commitment that i've made for my future thank you thank you so much ruby that is a real brave commitment you've made up for yourself and i hope that everyone who is listening here had a huge lesson to learn from your experience and good luck with whatever you are trying to do in life and i hope you i hope you will pursue your goal in life thank you so much our next panelist is margaret of good shepherd vocational school bogor indonesia she is a brave strong willed 15 year old girl who has a powerful stance on what she expresses the light is on you good luck margaret Hello everyone. I'm Margaret. I study at Good Shepherd Vocational School, Bogor, Indonesia. I am so happy to be here with you today. The pandemic has had a big impact on our lives. We were being locked down and also were closed. In March last year, we started to study online. But not all of my friends have the access to study online because their connection isn't supported. Actually, COVID-19 has affected my life a lot. One of them is I can't meet my friends because of social distancing. Spending time with my friends has always made me happy and this distancing made me so sad. So, we started to meet during online classes, but that was also very challenging. We could not manage to study if we only wanted to meet each other. So we started meeting on social media instead. But we find that social media is also giving many problems for us as well. Then I found some benefit from COVID-19. That is, my relationship with my family is getting stronger. I have an older sister and younger brother. By being at home, I realize I can share more story with them, help my mom a little more, and even allow them to watch my online classes and share the stories too. Now I know that my family is my first circle of friends. I am a person who loves to hang out with my friends, go out and have fun. It was simply terrible when I couldn't go to places because it was closed and there were so many restrictions. This few months taught me to value my family and build the, the relationship I took for granted always. By the time the lockdown lifted, I was happy to go out following the protocols. And then I realized it was still not the same. I could not meet my friends freely because we are not yet sure of our health conditions and when and where COVID-19 is waiting to listen up on us or our loved ones. Something that really disturbed me was something I heard from my of my friends on social media. She told me that her friend was married off. A 15 years old girl like me getting married. I was shocked. Besides, I came to know that husband abused her. He was an alcoholic and so much older than her. I felt so bad. This incident of child marriage truly upset me. I feel Child marriage robs girls of their childhood. It forces girls to drop out from school and it exposes them to different forms of violence like physical, mental, sexual, and also emotional. I see that child marriage isn't good for girls because their bodies and young minds are not ready to experience such trauma besides motherhood. My experience when COVID-19 was so different. Why? Because I'm so shocked that many humans, so many people in my country or around my city are using this pandemic time when everyone is suffering so much. 
to add more suffering to girls. This is a violation of girls' rights. A year since COVID, I am a different girl. I love and respect my family so much more. I know how to use social media to be informed about things carefully. I know I want to help other girls like me who are robbed of their childhood. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. Your words literally brought tears to my eyes, especially the part when you spoke about your friend getting married at the age of 15. I can't imagine that. And I think we all are so fortunate to, to be living a blessed and a peaceful life while some of the people are suffering in their own ways when they're children. I think we need to be thankful for every little moment we spend. Thank you so much, Margaret. And now uh, we have a small questionnaire session for each of the panelists. So the first question goes to Rachel from Sri Lanka. Where are you with us? Yes. So Rachel, how do you think each of us, and uh, how do you think uh, educate, uh, how was the impact on education during the pandemic for us? And how can you relate it to each of us as we are in so many different places? So uh, with the uh, with lockdown and with the schools closing, we all had to uh, move to online learning. Um, online learning is good because you can you can hear the teacher and you can use visual presentation. But uh, the bad side of it, I would say, is because not everyone has stable internet connection. And uh, during our online lesson, like it's not like a normal classroom. In the classroom, we can always raise our hand and ask a question from the teacher and clarify our doubts then and there. But it's not like that in an online lesson. And uh, not everyone has the facilities like i know in some areas like in some families that when, when they don't have enough devices and uh, both children like a girl and a boy they have to join for, for their different classes the parents itself they give priority for the education of the boy child and that is really unfair for the girl because even her education matters so I think those are the challenges that we've had to face when it comes to education during the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Like all of us have faced so many problems. Our education was not well. And like we also faced gender discrimination during this COVID, even on education. And that is so sad to hear. So our next question is to Rudvi from Karjan. How do you think our mental health has been affected in different perspectives during this pandemic? Uh, I think that mental health is the biggest factor that has been affected because uh, you literally cannot do anything about it. Honestly, I did not actually, I did not do anything. I wasn't productive at all. All I did what was I used to sit on a couch, plug in my earphones and cry about how much weight I've put on and how much lazy I've become. And mood swings, mood swings, I don't think I even have to explain about it. Because we know that when you're on your periods, it's like one second you're laughing like you're crazy and the other second you're like uh, crying, you're having a breakdown. So uh, the only thing... We is share we we can just uh, i can share myself uh, knowing that i will feel good it's okay it's okay to not be okay uh, but you need to express yourself in order to uh, lift the uh, lift the weight of your shoulders if not uh, in a big group at least share it uh, with someone, uh, with, with the right person, with someone you're comfortable with. Uh, that is all that uh, we can do to uh, feel better about it. 
Yeah, so that's it. So doing your, your expressive thoughts on mental health, the way you express, the way you personalize things, and the way you connect it to people, it's like so amazing and it really gives us so much courage to speak up ourselves. And that is, I salute you for that, and that is so amazing. Thank you so much, Sudhani. And my next question is goes to Margaret from Indonesia. Margaret, you spoke about child marriage. You mentioned about one of your friends. So how would you fight against the evil social practice of child marriage as a student, as, as, a, as, to, as a 15-year-old girl? How would you handle that situation? When I see a girl getting married too young, I take a stand and I say no to child marriage because many children will suffer from physical, sexual, and emotional violence. We have to support children to be able to continue their studies for a better future. And in child marriage is not easy, but change is possible if we work together and never surrender to end up child marriage. Every person has an important role to end child marriage. There are many things that we can do to end child marriage, like educate girls, empower girls to have the right to decide on their future, educate her surroundings about the negative consequences of child marriage, and last but not least, continue raising awareness of the law that protect the girls from child marriage. That's from me, thank you. Really talking about it. Like I think that personally, um, every girl should have the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong, and she should be given the basic education so that she can stand up for her own self. Even if she is a child, a fifteen-year-old girl like me, she should know how to fight against it. So, education is the basic for everything. Don't you agree, Margaret? Totally. That's lovely, Margaret. Thank you so much. So now uh, we 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 throw the session open to all of you. Um, if you have any questions, you can make use of the chat box. And uh, there's uh, previously prior to the session, uh, there was a Google Docs posted by Jill. So if you have any questions. You can just click on the link given in the chat box and ask whatever you're curious about. Let so that the limelight is thrown on what you want to do. Feel free to also leave them in the comment section if you're viewing it through YouTube. Hi, Mumita and Khadija. We only have one question for now. So let me throw out the question out in the open. The first question is, how can you start to change the mindset of other people that girls are weak? Do we have any other question? Please make sure you use the, hand, the raise hand option on Zoom so that we can recognize your answer. So I can repeat the question. Okay, how can you start to change the mindset of other people that girls are weak. The question is open to any of the panelists. You can just use the virtual raise hand option to answer the question. Yes, Subia. It's yeah. open. Um, I think you're in mute, Subia. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Thank you for this question. According to me, we can change the mindset of people that girls are weak by showing them what we can do. We are so challenging. We can be successful in life and stand as an example for others to make their daughters feel proud of them and change their mindset that if that girl can do, my daughter, my sister also can do it. 
So like this, this is one of the way that we can change the mindset of the people. Thank well, you. Well said, Subria. That's amazing. And that's so true and stands so true our, of our aim for today. Together, we can. Thank Any you. Words? Yeah, I would like to translate from Zimma Twe. She said, um, girls are weak. The mindset of girls that are weak, she said she doesn't believe that that the, the, the mindset of that, believing that the girls are weak, because you first you have to believe, and she herself believed that she is strong. So having the mindset that I am strong is already standing with the girls. Thank you. Very amply said. Thank you. Any inputs on this answer? Uh, Rudvi, you're on mute. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in order to tell people to bring an awareness among them, uh, first the mania uh, should be uh, should be stopped. Like people should not think uh, that um, it is a female uh, male dominant society. We should work accordingly. Uh, like we are humans, and we should be treated uh, treated uh, as we are. Uh, and there are many uh, living examples. There are many sportsmen, sports person, uh, and there are many women participating in politics, sports, or any sector. So, in order to uh, bring about society in the thinking of people, we should change ourselves first. We should not go by the stereotypes. We should not support them, but at times we should stand up. For uh, for ourselves, and say it's not right and this is wrong. So, uh, that is what I want to say. So Turi spoken to Dwee, and uh, you asked me that question, and I repeated a hundred times that in order to make girls strong, as I repeated it before, education is very important. I hope all of you agree with that, and people. First, we ourselves need to start believing, then we have to make other people believe. That's very important. Anybody want to add up to add up to the question again? Yes, right. Please go ahead. For us to change the mindset of other people, we always need to accept ourselves first. Again, going back to my speech, we should accept ourselves and love ourselves more for us to prove to them that we are strong and we are not this kind of person that we're thinking, that they're thinking. That's all. Very amply said. Thank you. Do we have any in inputs on this answer? Okay, um, if there is another, we, we have a second question, and maybe this is the last question already. So let me throw it out in the open again. Since we are all at home, okay, during quarantine, how can we use social media uh, to help and to make it beneficial to our girls? Okay, so, so let me repeat. Since we are all at home, okay, during quarantine, how can we use social media to be beneficial to girls? Do we have any inputs? You can always make use of the raise hand feature. Yes, Sabia. Do go ahead, Sabia. Yeah. Thank you for this question. So just I want to say how social media has impacted on girls during this COVID-19. Because the, in social media, we see people from different countries and from different corners of the world. They share the ideas of girls in the social media. And I think the girls of my country and all the girls in their countries can implement their ideas and the situation of the girls all over the world. So thank you. 
very likely that to be uh, i think that is so amazing that though physically the world is so large and we through social media we are so easily connected to every part of the world and uh, in these times it is so amazing that we can voice out what we want to speak so easily uh, with the help of social media any inputs on this please feel free everyone twice please go ahead in this time we couldn't change what the people share on social media we couldn't change how toxic social media is uh, what we can do is we can work together to help improve the social media people or the mindsets of other people that we are in this kind of situation right now and we have to move forward and able for us to be empowered that's all Mariam ki said Do we have any inputs on this answer? Well, seeing that there are no inputs, we now hand it over to and now I hand it over to Khadija to welcome Ms. Trisha. Um now let's welcome Trisha uh to give her thoughts and insights and what the how the panel went about and what the key points what we discussed today thank you so much katija i think my first reaction to all the panelists is i just want to give you a big round of applause for all your sharing and if we were face to face i'd give all of you a big big hug um thank you so much for all that you have shared just now it's truly truly wonderful to listen from girls from good shepherd advocate for girls um and to and to be the voice of girls i just want to tie in all that you have shared today and to bring it all together in maybe um one or two paragraphs in different spaces that you have from myanmar indonesia india the philippines um and sri lanka i just want to commend you for bringing the voices of girls from these countries there are common threads in what you have shared and you have highlighted both girls from the rural areas as well as girls from the uh, urban areas um there is this whole milieu of education and how the schools have closed because of covid and each one of you have shared the repercussions of this closure on you and how you have your own social networking has been disrupted how you you have to stay you had to stay at home um and we hear from myanmar how difficult it is not having online facilities to continue studies if we read the unicef reports and we read other reports on the effect of covid-19 on students we will hear that this whole closure has set back the education of children for many um you know has set back terribly the education of children and it will have future impact on the workforce going forward so you have shared that many of you have shared about staying at home and we have also heard about girls who have engaged on social media and have started relationships and then have gone into early marriage and this is also part of statistics that we see um in unicef and in other reports that are being done on the effects of covid-19 we also hear that with with covid-19 the economy has been affected and therefore families have been affected and therefore household incomes have been affected we hear about girls and today we also hear from um our friend from Myanmar Matue you know who said that she's not sure after this whether she will actually go back to school or need to start work to supplement the household income this is the reality of many girls within uh, asia pacific and beyond asia pacific and we also hear about social media how on one hand it is such a useful tool and technology such a useful tool to connect us and on the other hand if we do not know the safety rules of social media and social guidelines um how it can also be something that we need to be aware of and how it can be very challenging for our girls and young people so based on that I want to um also bring one last uh, factor in one last important thing that was mentioned by everyone almost everyone um was about health both physical health and mental health and how this 
has also played out and how each one of you have shared that your own reflection of who you are as girls, you had to ask yourself being disrupted from your own social networking, uh, being separated from your friends and being with family the whole time. And how is that, how has that impact, impacted you as a young person, as a young person who's had uh, the ability to move and has the ability to mix freely? How has this impacted you? And you've had to reflect on what your own identity is. And many, many have said to acknowledge and understand the strength of the girl child. And with that, I want to end that each one of you as girl children are so important that even the Beijing platform has a section on the girl child and how we must pay attention to the girl child so that for future generations, communities, families, society, and the country can be empowered through women who have a voice and women who make a difference in our world today. So with that, I end my sum summary and I congratulate the panelists again. Uh, really, really well done to each one of you. A round of applause to everyone. For those of us who are on this Zoom screen, if you can put on your cameras, your, your, your videos, and let's just give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and that brings us to the end of this panel discussion. I'd like to thank each of the panelists again for your deep and enlightening insights. Yeah, all of these issues that we spoke about today, I think need to be approached, considered and talked about by each of us and the solutions need to be found. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building something new. Likewise, I would say, no path was born to be a path in the beginning. Someone has had to walk on it first for it to become a path. And then the soil is molded and formed, then a walkway will form for the first time. And me, as girls and women and representatives of these generations, we should be brave enough and have the courage to mold the future in what we want it to be. People need to get stronger in these times and work with unity. And ultimately, the greatest lesson that COVID-19 has taught humanity is that going back to our theme of today, we are all in this together. And that's so amazing. And, um, and I thank all the panelists I thank Lisa and for your lovely insight and bringing together all the 40 food today. And thank you so much. Hold on, everyone. We still have a fun time right now. So I now hand it over to Isabel and Jared to conduct a Kahoot. Over to you. Uh, before, uh, before we conduct the Kahoot, I would just like to add in and say, uh, thank you, Mamata and Khadija, for leading the panel so beautifully well, and Ms. Reza for tying the threads and summing up the panel for us. And kudos to all the panelists. All of you spoke so well, and um, seeing all of you speak, Ruth B, Royce, um, Margaret, uh, Sings in Matwe speak, all of you speak from Myanmar, uh, Felicitas, and Helen. Seeing all of you speak was truly so inspiring. I was listening to all of it here, and um, I just, I just could feel how much, you know, how much power we hold and how much change we can bring about if, uh, if we wanted to. And um, yeah, and I feel that's really inspiring. And I'm really proud of what we have done and what uh, we have accomplished so far. That being said, uh, it was a very interesting and informative uh, panel. Kudos to all of you. It's now time to test how many of you were attentive in the panel and how much you have heard. And so I now hand it over to Isabel and Jared to conduct a small game of Kahoot um, to, to just know how much we've all heard and hope we all have fun. Thank you, Fatima. That was such a fr fruitful discussion, don't you think, Isabel? I agree. I learned a lot. But now, uh, let's have fun. 
Come on. Yes, let's go. Before we go through with the game, let's go to the following guidelines. Are you guys ready? Are you ready, Isabel? I am. So for, and for everyone that hasn't experienced Kahoot, first is you can get a separate device or you can also use this device, but we suggest that you use a separate device so that it will be easier. And then we go to kahoot.it or you can click the link that was sent in the chat box and we will it when you got when you go to the main screen it will be asking for the game pin the game pin has been sent in the chat box but i can repeat it for you it's seven zero nine eight one eight one and and then you guys can go ahead and click enter you will be asked to give a nickname or you can also choose to go ahead for a auto-generated nickname. And then you can go ahead and, and click OK Go button. And it will bring you to the game lobby. So just know that we will be able to see the names of persons that join this Kahoot. The questions and answer choices will be displayed on our screen, whereas your screen will display only the answer buttons. You will select the answer choice corresponding to the button with the same color and shape as the answer choice within 10 to 30 seconds as mentioned. So be alert. Uh, our shapes and colors are a red triangle, a blue diamond, a yellow circle, and a green square. Now, once all the players have answered the question, the correct answer in a bar graph with the overall snapshot of the responses will be displayed on the instructor screen. And then we will click next to move the next question. And at the end of each question, the leaderboard will display the top five scorers. There, let's welcome our players. Hi, Karen Mercat. Hello, cute tiger. Who else There's is a lot there? Of we have a lot of players. <laughs> join in, guys. Hello to the YouTube community, and you guys can go ahead and join in with us. If you have There's still time to join, so go ahead. Okay, there are now 33 players. 34. Welcome, Give come a shout on in. Out. Hello, friend, friendly Macau. You guys don't need to be embarrassed. This is a fun game. This is for fun, right, Isabel? It is. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that if for some reason they can't join the actual game, you're all more than welcome to comment your answers in our chat box or in the YouTube comment section. So you're welcome to participate. <laughs> you have a lot of players. Did you guys listen very attentively? Let's test you. I can see 95 of us here and uh, only 40 on the screen there. More of you the one, I think. Yeah, let's join, guys. It will be fun. We promise. All of you are worried that you might not. It's all right because um, it's just a fun game. Uh, we want all of you to have fun and to see uh, all in all how much we've learned and how much we've learned so far. Yes, we need you just also eight more the people. Teachers. Come on. We will be starting the game when we reach around 50 percent, so make sure you we don't stop. Forty-four, forty-five, 
46. Ooh, we're close to target. Just three more. Hello, YouTube. Let's go. Join, join. Excited for that. While we're waiting, two, one, oh, we're on forty-eight now. Forty-nine. Just come on, one more. Just one more. Yes, be alert. We will be having a time limit, so you guys have to answer right oh, away. We're on 50 now. We can be on 50. Let's go. This one is a quiz with multiple choice. How has COVID-19 affected girls and women? Red one for barely affected, blue for yes, downfall in self-care and economic well-being, yellow for no, there has been no effect on the girls and women, green for yes in few countries. So the formerly known as the novel coronavirus COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization on March 11 of 2020. So what are your answers? Correct. The correct answer is COVID-19 has affected girls and women in the sense that, yes, there has been downfall in self-care and economic well-being. So, 19 got it right. Yay! Congratulations! Also, Once again, we would... How fast you answer also uh, determines the points you get. So, if you answer quick, um, you get more points and you're on top of the podium. Once again, we would like to mom. remind everyone who's not in the Kahoot game that they're more than welcome to type in their answers in the chat boxes and comment sections. Thank you. Let's see the scoreboard. Oh, we have a leading. Uh, congratulations to Amazon Puffin. Everyone can go ahead and catch up. We are still not yet half of the game, right, Isabel? Nope, there's plenty more questions. Let's go on with the next question. Okay, this one is true or false. The coronavirus has put girls and women at a greater risk of gender-based violence and exploitation. We're getting answers on this really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they listened to your... Mm -hmm. Words, Fatima. Fun fact, 49.6% of the world's population is are women. Ooh, looks like 30 of you got it right. And yes, it is true. Sadly. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Someone who is top of the leaderboard. Let's go, Majestic Pony. Oh, Ooh. Hold, hold on, someone raised their hand. Bibiano Lobo. Yes. You have a question? Please unmute or put it in the chat box. There's no need to be shy. Go ahead. Oh. Right, I think we can go ahead. Okay. okay. This one is another multiple choice. Which of the following topics was not covered in this panel discussion? Red one for self-care, blue for menstrual equity, yellow for girl empowerment, and green for COVID-19 and girls. With hearing from six panelists and their empowering words, which topic wasn't discussed? And time is up. We have 18 of you getting it right. And yes, it is menstrual equity. All of you have been listening. The majority of you, menstrual equity is the right answer. Congratulations. Oh, Amazon Puffin got back up. I think it's time for the next question. 
Okay, here we go. Quiz. We have multiple answers once again. Identify the countries which coped well during the pandemic. New Zealand, Taiwan, Iceland, or Malaysia. Once again, this is a multiple, multiple answers. question. You guys you can, can have more than one but answer. You oh, can those have are nice countries that I would love to visit, don't you think? I want to go travel again. So I think these countries are great places to go. Ooh. Okay. The countries that did well within these choices are New Zealand, Taiwan, and Iceland. And I would like to share that I think it's no coincidence that Taiwan and New Zealand did well, considering that they're both women-led. New Zealand has Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Taiwan has President Chai Ing-wen. So that's definitely proof of girl power. Oh, Ooh, we have another leading. Congratulations, Stellar Kitten. Let's move on to the next question. Which countries that countries that cope best with the pandemic are were led by women led leaders, respected human rights, had experienced deadlier crisis earlier, or implemented good elimination strategy? What do you guys think? I think a hint for the answer this time was given in the last question. I hope. <laughs> on Ooh. Looks like most of your answers were led by women lead leaders. What do you think about that, Isabel? Well, again, like I said, I think it's no coincidence because they really got a lot of stuff done. But there is no right answer to get. There is no right answer to this because this poll is based mostly just opinions. Yeah, that was a nice answer, guys. Right? Mm -hmm. Great to know that seventy-five percent of them think that it was uh because of the women leaders. I think it's. <laughs> Same. I definitely agree with that. Okay, what is the number of girls' school dropouts worldwide due to COVID-19? Is it 1 billion, 743 million, 800 million, or 740 million? You guys know that about 22% to 27% of individuals were affected by this pandemic. So, how many do you think are girl dropouts worldwide due to COVID-19? And time is up. Ooh. The, cor the correct answer is 743 million. 13 of you got it right. Oh, looks like everyone's listening attentively, huh? Mm -hmm. Congratulations. That's a nice one. And I just, last... I, just, I, I would just like to say that it's really sad that so many girls had to have dropped out. But that's our reality today. So I hope that a lot of us could work together to remedy this problem. Next question, please. Ooh, Stellar Kitten oh. staying up. Looks like Amazon Puffin is catching up too. Last question. Which of the following pictures best depict women empowerment? Oh, do, you might, do you guys know that empowerment means accepting and including people who are outside the decision-making process? Which means that... Women should be empowered, don't you think, Isabel? Definitely, definitely. That's why we're on this event. Yes, together we can be empowered. And, ooh, you've got two correct answers. Congratulations to the 21 and 19 people who answered correctly. Well, that's it for our Kahoot. Thank you so much for participating. Now let's check out our scoreboard. Top three, Majestic Pon Pony. Top two, Amazon Puffin. And top one, da -da -da -da. Stellar, Stellar Kitten! Kitten.
Congratulations, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so too. much for participating. Hope you guys enjoyed. And the ghost, now we're passing it back to you, Fatima. All right. Um, thank you so much, Isabel and Jared. That was a really, really um, refreshing and fun Kahoot, wasn't it? It was so um, lively. And yeah, I think I, uh, as far as I think, like all of you were hearing the panel discussions because most of you got the right answers. Um, but yeah, that was really a, a super refreshing Kahoot. So thank you so much, Isabel and Jared. Um, now that we're done exercising our minds a little, let's move around and exercise our arms and legs a little too. Um, it has been over two hours of Zooming here. So let's stretch our muscles, gaze out the windows, grab a chai or a cool drink as we listen to the feet tapping music. A song will now be played and make sure you move around and stretch out a bit and move to the beat of the song. Jerusalem, I am I definitely needed that little bit of stretching and I hope all of you did too. Did all of you have fun? Can I have the thumbs up symbol? All right. Um, now that we're done with that, uh, moving on, I now hand it over to Ms. Teresa to share some valuable information from the research on girl child done across Good Shepherd sites in Asia Pacific. Over to you, Ms. Teresa. Thank you so much, Fatima. Um, I will now share screen and bring us through this uh, research that we have done. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. This research is entitled Understanding Girls, a review of rights realization by girls in the Asia Pacific. And I'm here to share the preliminary findings with everyone. This is a joint research by Good Shepherd Australia, New Zealand and Good Shepherd International Foundation. Um, and I would like to also acknowledge during this, this presentation, uh, Lily Gardner, who is the research lead from GSANZ Policy Division. This research came about from our discussions during the International Day of the Girl Child last year. Uh, when we realized that it, it was not enough to just do the celebrations on the International Day of the Girl Child, but it's in, we need to, as Good Shepherd Asia Pacific, to take it one step further to understand what is affecting uh, girls across Asia Pacific so that we can be better in our programs. 
The project is focused on the rights of girls defined as young female child aged 18 years and under. The central consideration of the project is developing an understanding of the root causes that are holding girls back from achieving fullness of life and attainment of their human rights. As you can see, our project is focused on a rights-based approach. We have three objectives for this research. Number one is to inform stakeholders across Asia Pacific on key issues, systemic as well as root causes, affecting the rights of girls across the region. The second was to create a centralized analysis that contributes to advocacy in country and within the region on systemic changes required to support the advancement of rights for girls. And the third is to provide an opportunity for collaboration between Good Shepherd organizations across the Asia Pacific. From the panel discussions just now, we have heard all the issues that affect the girl child. And so we hope from this research to be able to have evidence-based documentation so that we can plan our programs better. And the approach that we use for this research, the first one is to look at Good Shepherd documents and information review. All Asia Pacific programs currently working with girls 18 years and under have provided existing evaluation and summary information of their programs. And we will use these existing programs that we have to inform this research. The second thing that we did was to consult our practitioners within Good Shepherd. Practitioners mean sisters and lay people, volunteers, staff, board members, etc., who are part of the social services and our schools working across the Asia Pacific on key issues faced by girls through a questionnaire and a focus group discussion. And the third thing that we will do after looking at what our programs offer and the consultation is to compare this with this analysis, a compilation and analysis of published literature on girls and their rights attainment, particularly uh, in the Asia Pacific region. And we will use this analysis to also Trans, um, contrast it with our own Good Shepherd insights. So what are we trying to understand from this research? We are trying to understand the first one is, what is important to girls now and into the future? What is important to girls now and into the future? And the second, we would also like to understand what is holding girls back from achieving the full realization of their human rights? And third, and most important for Good Shepherd mission, what solutions would improve the situation for girls in the attainment of greater human rights? So these are the three things that we are trying to understand from this research. I move on to the participants. But as I mentioned just now, the participants are practitioners within Good Shepherd programs across 15 countries where Good Shepherd is present. And you will see from this graph that we have participants from Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, the Philippines, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, and Macau. And 40, per, uh, 40 persons participated in the questionnaire. And after the questionnaire, we had a focus group discussion where 11 members came together to, to, uh, to share deeper about the survey findings. So when we approach the um, practitioners within Good Shepherd programs, we ask them to reflect on the work that they do within Good Shepherd. We also ask them to reflect and see what is important to the girls that they support now and into the future, and what barriers there are for girls achieving what they need to have to attain fullness of life. So, this is um, the, what I'm going to present to you now. It's the result of uh, 40 people who have answered a questionnaire and um, some of the responses from the focus group discussions. So when we talk about rights, we have to look at the laws in the country because that's where we are able to contrast human rights uh, with what is available in each country. So one of the core principles of human rights is that everyone 
is, is equal in dignity and entitled to all human rights without distinction. And this is in Article 1 and 2 of the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights. So whilst we say that all girls have the same human rights and legal protection as everyone, as illustrated in this data here, if you look at this graph on the left, when we ask, in the countries where you work, are you aware of laws and policy that prevent violence and exploitation of girls? Majority said yes, that they are aware of the laws and policies, such laws and policies. Then we ask the next question, do you think the justice system in the country where you work supports the girls you work with? And here you see that this whole resounding yes is now divided across uh, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. So we are looking here at people who are saying that they agree and some are saying that it doesn't actually quite happen. And if I go back to this slide, one questionnaire participant from the focus group discussion said, implementation of the laws do not sufficiently protect undocumented migrants, stateless children, refugees, and asylum seekers. Next, we look at gender equality. We look at gender equality and we look at laws and we look at the laws and policies in each person's country, whether that laws and policies promote gender equality. So here we will see that same uh, with our questionnaire just now on legal protection. We also see that people answer that, they, they, that there are laws and policies that promote gender equality in their country. But when we ask, do these laws and benefits, do these laws benefit the girls that you work with? And if you look at the responses here, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, disagree. There are quite many participants who have answered this way. And of course, the agree is also here. But there are, when we look at this, it is obvious that um, gender discrimination, patriarchy, society, patriarchal society, societal norms, stereotyping, stigma, contribute to gender-based uh, human rights violations, which are an expression and indication of underlying values, norms, and attitudes. Therefore, when we do our work within Good Shepherd, it is important to recognize and deal with this stigma, stereotypes, and discriminatory societal norms to effectively prevent human rights violations against women and girls from happening in the first place, you know? So one questionnaire participant from the focus group responded, laws for gender equality are not implemented well. Although it's present in her country, it lacks political will and budget. I now move on to the next response that we have. And this question asks, what is important to the girls you work with now? So if we look at the responses here, the three top responses that we have, the first important thing for all, most of the respondents was completing the education. The respondents ranked completing the girls' education as very important for girls. And the second response in order of um, importance is assessing healthcare, including mental health services. And the third highest response is freedom from sexual and other forms of gender-based violence. So when we look at these three responses and we reflect back on the uh, panel discussion that we just had with the girls, it reflects what the girls were experiencing as panelists. And it also reflects what the practitioners uh, within Good Shepherd programs are experiencing with the work that they do on the ground. What would you say is important for the girls' future? Here again, the three top uh, responses are access to quality education. And the second highest, access to healthcare, including mental health services. And the third, laws that prevent women, laws that prevent and protect women and girls from sexual and other forms of gender-based violence. We heard from our panelists as well um, how their own mental health were affected and how access to healthcare, including mental health, is important for their well being. Next, let's just look at health per se as, as um, one of the bullet points. 
this response is very interesting because for Good Shepherd, our, if you're hearing thunder and lightning, um, it's because it's raining very heavily where I live at the moment. So we asked our participants, how accessible is healthcare, including mental health services for girls that you work with? And the response was, access is influenced by geographical location, whether they are in the rural areas or within the city, within class and ethnicity, infrastructure and medical and professional availability, affordability, whether they are aware, whether private healthcare or public healthcare is accessible to the girls. And uh, during the COVID pandemic that we are here now, experiencing now, healthcare is also affected by COVID and the e-health facilities that are available. So when we look at health, whilst gender powerfully shapes all aspects of health and well-being, the, 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 one of the aspects that have come across is also how do we respond to healthcare, including mental health for our program participants and for girls across Asia Pacific. What are the two top barriers holding girls back from achieving the full attainment of their human rights, of their human rights. So here we have the first top barrier that everyone put in is discriminatory gender norms, roles and expectations. And the second barrier that we have here are sexual and other forms of gender-based violence. Sexual and other forms of gender-based violence. So these two discriminatory gender norms, roles and expectations deal with our society, the family, the society, and the community that surrounds the girls. And sexual and other forms of gender-based violence is what we are experiencing within these societies today. And what to which two options would increase the girls' ability to actively achieve their human rights? We have here two top options would be encourage and practice participation of all children especially girls in decision-making processes at home, in school, and in the community. And the second priority that we have is educating family and society on the rights of girls. So it looks here, it looks like here, when we um, uh, want to address girls and their own attainment of their own rights, it is very important that we encourage and practice participation of the children themselves in decision-making processes. And therefore our programs and how we empower girls within our programs is very important. And as we look at all the girls who are present here today, uh, leading this uh, panel discussion, moderators, et cetera, et cetera, we really do have hope for girls within Good Shepherd programs. And now um, I'm open to take any questions that you may have. You will see that these are preliminary findings from the questionnaire that we have um, given, rolled out. We have not had time yet to amalgamate the focus group discussions, um, the responses from the focus group discussions and correlate it uh, back to the uh, survey monkey that uh, we, um, we administered across the participants. Um, so I'm open to questions that you may have. And, um, the full report will be released um, on St. Mary Euphrasia's birthday, which is 31st July, 2021. So I'm going to stop sharing screen here um, and take any questions that you may have. Feel free to unmute and ask the questions or put it in the chat box. Just give me a moment, I close my door so that the uh, thunder and lightning, um, the sound is reduced. Just give me a moment. I'm back. Maybe I can just take one or two questions. Um, and then the full report will be out on the 31st of July.
I think everybody can unmute now. I think it has been um, available to unmute. So please do go ahead. It's all right if you don't have uh, questions at the moment, uh, because these are preliminary findings. Uh, I want to um, thank all those who participated in this um, research that we've done so far. And we are very excited about the outcomes that we will have once we put together the survey responses and the focus group discussion. And we hope that um, the results of the research will actually inform our services across Asia, Pacific and beyond. And um, we will then do a review of our interventions and how we can actually incorporate uh, the root causes of what our girls are experiencing to help our girls across Asia Pacific, who will be women into the future to address gender-based violence. So thank you everyone for this space to present uh, the preliminary findings of the research. Thank you so much. I hand over to the moderators for the next part of this uh, program. Thank you so much, Ms. Teresa, for sharing um, your views on the research. It was truly, really enlightening indeed um, to see that how much we have uh, accomplished and how much we have more to accomplish. Uh, and as you said, um, as our Good Shepherd girls here are leading it, uh, moderating, and the panelists, all of them, um, I think we really do have hope for our future generations. So yes, thank you so much, Ms. Teresa. Um, now, I invite yet another Good Shepherd um, uh, student from, uh, I invite Chelsea from St. Bridget School, Quezon City, to share an interesting infographics prepared by her team from the same school, addressing a burning issue, which invites us to put a period to the period myth. Over to you, Chelsea. All right. Mabuhay, everyone. Happy International Women's Month to all. I am Chelsea Antalan, a student leader from St. Bridget's School, Philippines, and SBS Idenayale. Today, I am going to discuss about menstruation myths. So, last year, December 2020, our school organization, SBS Idenayale, with the guidance and support of our school, RGS, and mission partners, we produced a radio play in light of our anti-violence against women and children campaign entitled Kalakuchi Season Ang Regla ni Rea. Regla is a Filipino word that means menstruation. By using such a very direct and straight to the point terms, we aim to establish our calls for being more open to these kinds of topics and to break the stigma in talking about a very natural thing with us girls, which is menstruation. Right after the radio play itself, we produced a fact sheet, sheet that is actually pre um, presented in your screens right now to further explain the surrounding theme inside our show. Right here is the flyer fact sheet that we have produced. Well, we see in Asian countries, it is common knowledge to all of us that majority of girls have a hard time talking about menstruation in their homes especially those who live with family members because it is a taboo topic. And, well, this endangers every girl from being not being able to be informed and educated well about the topic. It is important that we, we push for a scientific, more open and safe space for us to talk about this natural process with us girls, which is having a period. Menstruation usually starts for girls ages 10 to 16 years old. This is where it releases the monthly buildup of the lining in the uterus through the form of blood, as we all know. And the menstrual cycle varies for each girl. Some of us last up to five days or a week, but some of us, just like me, as, an, as a girl who has a regular period, only, my period only lasts for three days. We usually use sanitary pads, menstrual cups, and tampons during our period. We should be reminded that every girl should have equal access and rights to these products because this is important for the hygiene and reproduction, reproductive health of each girl. In line with all these, we should push for the sexual and reproductive health rights of each girl. Every woman should have equal access to medical measures such as contraception, 
tests and education to keep them safe from any sexual and reproductive related health risk because we are aware that most of these could actually lead to some disease or worse death. We all know and we should all acknowledge that, is, that it is indeed challenging to be a woman. Being a woman is a blessing, both a blessing and a curse, as we all know. It is very hard to carry a life inside your body. It is not that easy. And it is a whole process that we would be needing support from everyone in our community. So we, it is a must that we, um, we create a community that will support us and will not discriminate us from being simply just women and being this natural and having this natural process inside us which is menstruation if all of you are wondering why we should talk about menstruation we should discuss about this in order to normalize using the right terms well this includes not putting code names because this could be more misleading and discriminatory so we should not be ashamed of calling out of straight straight up calling our um, genitals vagina. We should uh, there is no need anymore to call them flowers or any other code names because it could be misleading, especially for young women. This would also educate everyone to end the stigma and discrimination towards girls and tagging them being weak and being too emotional and even a hormonal loaded being especially in our country the philippines which is a very conservative country we could there is still a prevalent um episodes of men throwing misogynistic remarks towards towards women especially in our government we see men leaders looking down on women telling us that we cannot lead and that is so rude and that is something that that is something that we need to change in our society today. Also, there might be girls who can experience mood swings during menstruation. However, the experience may vary for each girl. Inside our radio play, um, we have um, we ha uh, we had a story about a young girl who just found out that she had a period. And inside the our show, we are trying to debunk myths about menstruation and one of which is um girls being having uh having all girls having mood swings all the time and that's not always the case because some girls have period cramps food cravings or just feels lethargic or sleepy all the time and not ex there are also girls who are actually not experiencing significant changes it just feels normal and all of us can go through their, there are girls also who, who could go through their menstruation just like it's a normal day. So we should not generalize, generalize that, that women having menstruation equates to them being um, emotional train wrecks or being, being um, weak women, right? All right. So with this, we encourage everyone to start these conversations at home, especially in this time of the pandemic. Um, Young girls are just allowed to meet online. There are um, there are uh, there aren't enough support or there are not um, enough face-to-face -face, um, interaction. So we should make use of these uh, the online platform. And of course, the much more important is the this con these kinds of conversations should start within our homes, not just with the mothers, but of course with the male members of the family. It is important that every family member is aware of this in order to be of great help and support, especially to those young girls who are still not educated well enough in the topic. This is a very critical part of every girl's life because this is where sexual awakening usually starts and where we become more curious about things, especially sexual things. This would also help us to educate everyone to be respectful careful with their actions and be aware of every girl's rights this will further help us to prevent cases of abuse like rape and many other sex and violence related problems there are indeed stereotypes that needs to be changed we should know that menstruation is normal this does not make us weak so we 
encourage you to join us in breaking the stereotypes regarding women. We are capable. We should not be defined by our anatomy, by our organs, we, and by being emotional beings alone. We can be responsible enough to handle whatever pressure that the world may throw us, that may that the world may throw at us. We are exceptional, and we can conquer all things. Let us end vow now and be reminded that yes, together we can. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chelsea, for setting the stage and inviting us all to choose to challenge because um, the topic of menstruation is really considered taboo in many countries, even though we might be talking about it right now. Um, there must be somebody in the background going, oh my God, what is she talking about? And um, in some households, it is still a really, a really big taboo. So I, I applaud you for talking about it and thank you for um, letting us all know and helping us all choose to challenge. So thank you, Chelsea. Before we begin with our second panel, we have a video from Bangalore, India, where we have yet another powerful woman voicing out her struggles with the issues regarding body shaming in her society and she is here to share her experiences with us. I'm Isha and I'm from Sacred Heart Girls High School, Bangalore. And I'm going to be talking about body shaming in size zero. When I was 11 years old, I knew my body was going through changes. I had just gotten my period, I was growing up, but I wasn't bothered by it. Until one summer, I went to my hometown to visit my relatives and the aunties told me I grew big. They didn't tell me I grew up or grew tall. They told me I grew big. As if that wasn't already enough, my uncle, as a joke, called me fat. The funny thing was, I hadn't realized I had put on weight until those people decided to point it out. It's natural. It happens to every girl, my mother told me. She made me read an article about body acceptance. I love her for it, but I was still caught on to their words. So I went back home and I worked out. To alter parts of my body, I wasn't satisfied with. And it exhausted me. 50% of the women in India have been body shamed at least once in their lifetime. Shame on the people who insult others on the way they look. Those people don't realize it. But their one comment can change the recipient's outlook on themselves, making them feel less worthy and loved. With an increasing use of social media, people post negative comments on the appearance of somebody else without thinking much of the consequence. When in actuality, body shaming has a lot of consequences. It leads to an inferiority complex, lowered self-confidence, and even eating disorders. We need to remember that no matter what the person's size, shape or color is, it isn't the criteria that defines someone's potential or character. Women think that they can be beautiful only if they're thin or have a size zero. They need to be taught that their self-worth is independent of their weight. Beauty is beyond size. Achieving self-worth and self-love can be one of the strongest things you can do. But once you've achieved it, you can be unstoppable. Thank you. Those were powerful words indeed. It was so amazing to see that she's speaking out against body shaming in her society. She spoke about something um, personal, which was uh, which she had been put through. And speaking out when something personally happens to you is not that easy. So I really applaud her courage. And um, I think we, we all should appreciate how much, uh, how much courage she had taken to speak up. Um, now, before we move on to the events we have done for today, I request all of you to um, just have a cup of coffee, eat something, move around, and um, know that together we can, but we also need to uh, be refreshed and uh, just just have something, just eat something or drink some water. It's important to stay hydrated and refreshed. So yes, before we move on, I just wanted to say that. Um, now, I hand it over to Sanjana and Maumata, the moderators of panel two, to lead the discussion. Over to them. 
Thank you, Fatima. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is in your time zone. I'm so happy to have all of you here, and I hope you had a lovely time in the first half of today's program. And I'm very pleased to ask you to buckle up for a very thought-provoking, captivating panel discussion that we have planned for you. And like Fatima said, I think it's very important for you to hydrate yourself. So have a cup of water, some juice, anything at all. Make sure that you're comfortable and you are comfortable and where you're seated because we have a lot of things planned for you and we want you to be comfortable and happy the, in the way you are. So the topic of discussion in today's second panel, despite being one of great importance, is often not at the forefront of feminist movements. Bodily autonomy, sexual and reproductive health, which comes from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 3 and 5, for good health, well-being, and gender equality. No woman can call herself free who does not own and control her body, Margaret Sanger. We own our bodies. Our body imaging and its periodic functions should be our right. Bodily autonomy is a right to governance over our own bodies. It means we as individuals make decisions on its physical appearance without any external influence or coercion. Over recent times, we've seen a sharp rise in empowered women who have begun their paths to self-acceptance and self-love. We've also seen women who are tirelessly advocating for menstrual equity, representation of women, and an equal world. But in the end, we are faced with the bitter truth that just women are not enough. Just women are not going to be able to bring a shift in this backward and patriarchal mindset. It's gonna take collective efforts to bring about a positive change. I don't think anybody else could have set a better precedent for our um, panel other than Chelsea who spoke about menstruation and Isha whose video spoke about um, you know, the body and how we should all be safe and comfortable feeling good in our own bodies. So from the grassroots level where women don't even have access to menstrual products, sexual and reproductive health care, to levels where even girls from educated backgrounds like you and I are still uninformed and ignorant about sex education and our own bodies. And on the other hand, where women and girls, irrespective of their background and families, are taught to hate their own bodies if they aren't the perfect size or color or up to society's beauty standards. Change is needed and it is needed now. We live in a world that continues to tell us to shrink in size and in sound. But challenging that, our panelists have come together to voice out and stand against body shaming, stand for bodily autonomy and focus on mental health and sexual and reproductive health while easing the stigma around menstruation. We have with us today five extremely powerful women here to share with us their experiences and their story. We welcome Moksha from India, Dileka from Sri Lanka, Chaitra from Bellari, Sophia from Philippines, and Hile from Myanmar. How is the COVID situation back home, guys? I hope all of you are safe in your own homes, comfortable, good. I hope you had something to eat. All good? Yeah, all good. Sophia, so, how are you doing? How is your past how, how has your past week been? It has honestly been exhausting, but I'm definitely excited for this panel. It's this panel is the thing that I've been looking forward to this whole week. That's I hope you do get some good rest as well this weekend then. Um, Huale, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. you. Leka, I hope you're doing good as well. I'm doing great. Thank you. Chaitra, what about you? Excellent. Thank you. And on that happy note, shall we move on with today's panel? Our first panelist for today is Huale from Myanmar. She is 16 years old, and we will be hearing about girls' rights and power from this powerful young girl. I'm also delighted to say that there's also a little surprise for all of us at the end of her presentation. 
the stage is all yours wale hello my name is laba chaka pyo kwin ya lo ti su twa ma de chama de me ga ro no he de ma chama ta ka ro sa chaw ne ba la shi ma ro chama ku ren tan ni ba de Minglava, thank you for giving me an opportunity to share with you. I am Helen. I am 16 years old. I'm attending in grade 10. Me kle ji yao ye swa yin ya su ran ni jama sa pyu che ma de. I would like to begin my presentation with the abilities of a girl. Me kle bi ma me ji twa nai de a ji ye chin ni. Me tha lu mya nai de a ye chin ni a mya ji shi ba de. Girl has uncountable and undeniable qualities. ไอ้ยายาบีเมคเลตอุหาไอ้หนาวจะคลีเวียได้บัวสุราทะเมคเลตรีหาอัตตะปีไหนเนี่ยซีเรียสสุราโหอะแม่ยะสิจะมาเอ
because they focus on daily food only. I don't want other girls to face like me, such as imprisoned at Moss Mill, living under darkness, no access to education and health, no chance to express dislikes, but accept everything. I want them to be brought up in a peaceful and secure society. My dream is to support empowered girls to stand for them and to fight in eradication of violence against women and girls with all my heart. My village has working groups for elimination of gender-based violence. They stand for any ethnic city and religion. I would like to appeal to all citizens to support and protect and collaborate girls and women when they pursue their dreams, hopes, education, information, and knowledge. I'm proud to be a girl, indeed, and I can create my own future as well. Now, I would like to send my best to all the listeners with the song I learned from my music class. As an owner of a girl type of the home world, can I? Yes, I will play and sing for you all. Thank you. for that beautiful start to our panel. Thank you for your lovely music as well. You are not just an activist in word and action, but also through music. And I could just hear the passion and determination that you have just through your voice, even though there is a language barrier. My heart goes out to you as you explained what you have endured. And it was truly only right to start our panel by listening to how powerful we as girls are and the change that we can bring. My best wishes for your bright future in lifting up other girls. 
And at this point, I would also like to say, if any of you have any questions, there is a link to a Google form put in the chat box and you can feel free to use that to send us your questions, the questions that you wish to ask to our panelists. And if you are on YouTube, this link will also be put in the comment section. So feel free to use it. Our next panelist of the day, Moksha from Good Shepherd, Chennai, India, is a brilliant orator and activist. Despite coming from a more privileged background, still has her own struggles and confusion when it comes to our particular topic of the day. But like Wale said, I'm sure Moksha too has realized the power that we all have within at the end of it all. Over to you, Moksha. Thank you, Sanjana. Uh, greetings, everyone. Before I begin, I'd like to thank my school for giving me the opportunity to be here and I'll do my best to make the most of it. I'm at a time in my life where there are very few things that I can say define me, but I do know two things. I am 17 and my name is Moksha Aradaga Permal. But here's the issue with those defining characteristics. They are simply not defining. Ideally, 17 is the year to enjoy one's childhood, but for 1.5 million Indian girls, it's the time to have their first child, perhaps even their second. To me, my name is a symbol of indigenous pride, but for the thousands of girls with no option but to marry to attain social security, their names changed to fit the strangers they told they belonged to, become nothing but a string of letters lost to the wind. Now, I go to a school where there are students with relatively far more liberal households than a vast majority of my country. And yet, there were three incidents that reminded me that regression can always seep through the cracks. Once, when I was in about eighth grade, I had a classmate very quietly ask me, Moksha, I haven't gotten my period in two months. Does that mean I'm a lesbian? This is the kind of mental chaos that ensues when girls aren't told the things that they should be told. I went on to conduct camps with my peers to spread awareness about menstrual health. I am glad I was able to answer questions about periods in front of my biology teachers. But for a lot of girls, information or rather misinformation about menstruation is something they get from friends or even worse, the internet. But can you blame kids for not wanting to have these conversations with medical professionals and trusted adults in a country where hostel wardens strip search girls to check if they're on their period and religious leaders condemn women to be born as female dogs in their next birth if they cook for their husbands during their period? As social taboos, religious sentiments and irrational propaganda run high, the needs of the girl child are forgotten. Even if they aren't forgotten, they are addressed so poorly that it's as if nothing has been done at all. Which brings me to the second incident. Our first lesson about puberty was in the eighth grade. But however, at the end of 11th grade, when we were discussing reproduction, I distinctly remember the best scoring pupil in class asking the question, what is a vagina? I am astounded by how little girls are allowed to know about their own bodies. The eyewash we'd like to call a sex education has left the vast majority of the student community to not even have the courage to say penis and vagina. How could something so simple be so controversial? I have a nose, I have eyes, and yes, I do have a vagina. That's what should be taught in schools. And the final incident took place when students in my class began discussing how wearing modest clothing could prevent rape. The sheer fact that after decades of so-called growth in women's rights, students are still debating on the provocation of rape is appalling to me. Here's what we should be talking about, consent. One might think that denouncing rape amounts to acknowledging consent. But that is simply not the case in a country like India. The average Indian girl is expected to enter into an arranged marriage with literally no formal sexual education, 
None. I mean, in a country where discussing menstruation is taboo, one can imagine how difficult it would be to say, hey, let's talk about sex. But not having that conversation begs the question, if I don't understand it, then how can I consent to it? If my, is my body so worthless that I don't get to make the informed decisions that one would make while selling a piece of property? How do we expect women to break glass ceilings and spearhead socioeconomic revolutions when we can't even bring ourselves to acknowledge that the only person who can have control over a woman's sexuality is herself? And by sexuality, here I mean menstrual health practices, sexual orientation, gender expression, sexual activity, marriage, and reproduction. Going back to where I began, I am 17, and my name is Moksha Adagaperman. And I have come to realize that the fact that those two things tell so much about me is a privilege, a luxury, in fact, that most girls my age can't afford. While fact remains that I'm young uh, and my opinions and ambitions are fluid, but there is one thing set in stone. I do not wish to be privileged. I do not wish an en environment that is conducive to the growth of the individuality of girls to be a gift begotten solely by the elite. And I will do everything in my power to ensure that one day, girls are no longer expected to be grateful for being allowed to grow autonomously with full control over their sexual and reproductive health rights. So the names of all the girls lost to the wind do not go in vain. Thank you. Thank you, Moksha. That was incredible. I have chills. I don't think anybody could have said it better. It's truly frightening to think about how misinformed we are despite being so educated. It is about time we started speaking about consent, about sexual and reproductive health and rights, and most importantly, about the objectification of women in our society. So thank you so much again. Moksha had said in her presentation, and I quote, we can't expect women to break glass ceilings and spearhead socioeconomic revolutions when we can't even bring ourselves to accept our own bodies and sexualities. And I could not agree more. And on this line, I now invite Sophia, a 12th grade student from Philippines, to share with us her own experiences concerning sexual and reproductive health. Take it away, Sophia. Thank you, Sanjana, and good day to all. I am Sofia Lardizabal, a 12th grade student from St. Bridget School, Quezon City, Philippines. I'd like to talk about my experiences concerning sexual and reproductive health and rights. I have been a student in St. Bridget School since I was five. Throughout the 13 years that I have studied in an all-girls exclusive school, I've always thought that openly discussing menstruation and periods in general was a normal thing. Whenever I needed a menstrual pad, I could just ask my classmates without having to think much about it. I only realized that it wasn't the same for others when I talked to students who came from co-educational schools. I learned that they had to hide that they're menstruating because they were taught that Talking about periods makes people feel uncomfortable. I even heard that they would even get shamed or even bullied just for menstruating. I once had a conversation with a friend about the sex education in the Philippines. We both agreed that it's definitely lacking. Yes, we were taught about the basics, what happens during sex, and the consequences of having sex especially the consequences of having sex. We were mostly taught abstinence, that it's the best birth control method. It is, but we cannot just expect teenagers to obey and comply with abstinence. I know teenagers who, despite being educated about sex, continue to practice unsafe sex, likely because they never knew their other options. Some even continue to do so despite having pregnancy scares themselves or from their girlfriends. We both agreed that it would have been nicer if we were taught 
how to practice safe sex and other methods of birth control other than the calendar method and abstinence. No, it is not going to corrupt our minds or ruin our innocence. This kind of information keeps us safe by letting us be aware of all our options so we could protect ourselves better. On that note, why are girls preferred to stay innocent and pure, to have shaved, smooth skin, be obedient, submissive, similar characteristics to a child? There are also a lot of unfair and questionable expectations that society has, not only for girls, but for boys as well. There are a lot of stereotypes that girls are put in based on their simple preferences and appearances. If a girl likes pink, then she's this kind of person. If she likes watching anime, then she's probably that kind of person. Growing up exposed to these kinds of stereotypes made me overly conscious of my preferences and how I dress up. For the most of my life, I have been living in fear of society's judgment. I only started to live for myself recently when I came to accept that no matter what I like, society is going to judge me, so might as well just start living for myself. But why does it have to be that way? Not too long ago, I was mistaken for a boy at a messaging app called Discord. I didn't mind, so I didn't correct them. When they would use he or him pronouns on me, it stayed that way for about a year. That experience made me realize how boys are less judged than girls. I was able to like things without being put in a box. I could say what I liked without people thinking, of course you like those things, you're a girl. I could be bad at playing a game and people wouldn't think that it was because I'm a girl. I also felt like I got to connect with people on a deeper level because I could be assured that they didn't just chat me or reply to me because I'm a girl. I liked the ambiguity that the internet gave because I got to form deeper connections with people I admired. I simply like being free of judgment and prejudice when socializing with people online. I hope that someday we'll come to a point where we as a society lose our prejudices based on appearances, religion, social status, and gender. I hope that one day we will be able to express ourselves freely, like what we really like, without having to think much about society's expectation of us. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia, and how well put together. Sex education for girls our age is a must, and it is such a shame that we are being denied that because it's impure or unholy. I'm sure our generation is challenging the usual norms and hopefully we can stand up for our right to information as well. It was delightful to hear about your little She's the Man episode and I hope one day we're all comfortable in our skin even without pretending we're a boy. So thank you so much for that and I can only aspire to have the courage and confidence of all these three panelists who have spoken today. I'm sure all of you in the audience have a plethora of questions boggling your minds as these young, strong, and powerful speakers take the stage one after the other. And I kindly request you to send in any questions you have through the link in the chat box or in the comments section if you're watching through YouTube. But before that, I'm lucky to ask my own questions to the first three panelists. So my first question is to Huale. Here is your question. What are some ways in which we can support girls who have faced domestic violence in their own homes? I will stand with them, empower them, and fight in the eradication of violence against girls and women, educate them, listen to them, and encourage them 
and trying to link with other organizations who can help the girls. Thank you. Thank you, Huale. I think it's very important for us girls to support other girls who have been through so much. And I hope that, um, that you continue your work of lifting up other girls who have faced domestic violence. And my second question to Moksha, you had mentioned in your speech that you wish we had been more informed and educated. So what are some things you wish you were taught or informed about sexual and reproductive health and rights? Um, thank you, Sanjana, for that question. Um, thankfully, um, I have parents who are very open about me, uh, very open to me about uh, menstruation and things like that. So I was able to learn all these things beforehand. However, when I showed up to school, there were always whispers about, oh my God, she got it too early. She got it too late. And I'm sure uh, most, of our, most of us from our school would have experienced that. So I just wish that when I came to school, somebody had told me, no, you hadn't gotten it too early. There's no such thing as too early. It's fine. And your body goes through this. It's completely fine. Um, that's one thing I really wish I had been told. And I also uh, think that other students would have really benefited from that. Thank you, Moksha. I think that's very true. It's funny how we are shamed for something as natural as menstruation. And I hope more women are more informed of what our body goes through. So my last question to Sophia, you had spoken about interacting on social media as a girl. And my question to you is, how do you think we can mitigate, the, mitigate women and girls being sexually harassed online? Would you like me to repeat the question for you? The question is, you had spoken about interacting on social media as a girl. And my question to you is, how do you think we can mitigate women and girls being sexually harassed online? All right, I think she has a little bit of an internet problem. So we will come back to her question. Um, till then, I hand it over to Mamata to continue with the panel discussion. Thank you, Sanjana. Our next panelist is Dileka from Sri Lanka. Dileka is a multitasker who is not only an advanced level math student, but is also an excellent dramatist and dancer. He's passionate about reaching out to the less oh, privileged. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Um, yes. I'm currently, I, I'm sorry, I currently suffered under technical difficulties. But, okay, so there's this thing that I learned online that's a, that I think is a really good way to help women suffering under domestic violence in their households. And it's something that's very discreet that you have your thumb here and then you close it. It's a sign of domestic abuse. And I think we should spread these kinds of secret signs with women so that we could all be informed and we could possibly have a better understanding and be aware when someone is in need of help. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. So well said, because especially during these times, uh, during these COVID times when women are forced to be at home, most of their abusers since they are also in the house, it's difficult for women to communicate that they have been abused, that they are being abused in their own homes. So I think through the internet, through such online forums, when we have um, things like these signs where we can voice out, where we can make it known that we are getting abused at home, it is very helpful to so many young women and girls. So thank you for informing, uh, informing us of that, Sophia. And now again, I hand it over to Mamita. So heading back to the Leka, uh, she loves creating awareness among them to make their lives better. So let's extend our warm welcome to the Leka. The stage is all yours, the Leka. Thank you. Hello to you all. My name is Dileka Nana Kada and I come from Colombo, Sri Lanka and was born into a family of five. In Sri Lanka, it is a perception that as a young girl, you are required to do all the household chores 
even if you have brothers. Growing up, my elder brother and I have always shared our duties equally and respectfully. And I think a great source to this is my grandmother who lives with us. She's a strong woman who brought up her children alone throughout their lives and is a great example to me. Although from time to time I hear a simple, as a girl you should know this and all, I have never been separately cornered to meet specific requirements as I know other girls of other families have to meet. Because of this, my brother and I share a very special connection. For an example, if we get hungry at night, I'll cook something because he can't cook at all. And after we eat it, he'll clean all the dishes that were used. I see that the way we were brought up has taught us how to respect one another and support one another always, even throughout the smallest things. And as many don't inculcate these values, you see a lot of men not respecting women and girls, body shaming them and hardly supporting them throughout their hardships and natural problems they face, such as their period. Speaking of menstruation, in Sri Lanka, coming of age is taken to heart very seriously. Even though I had a different experience, I remember my friends telling me how they had to stay inside their room for nearly two weeks, how they weren't allowed to look at any boys and were prohibited to eat certain foods. I never realized the depth of these, ritual, these rituals goes to until I traveled out of Colombo to a small village and sat down with a few teachers there. We discussed how it's very important to respect our ancestral cultures, but definitely agreed that the unnecessary myths and rituals adds a lot of pressure on young girls and affects them greatly. I saw from a few rituals that are done, a girl's period is simply shown as a disgust and results in boys never respecting what a woman's body does. It has come to heights where girls who are on their periods are not allowed to enter into religious areas as they are considered not pure and are looked at in disgust in certain cultures and regions of my country. On another community service project, I unexpectedly got my period and had to stop at a shop in the village to buy myself a packet of pads. And I realized that as I went to the shopkeeper and asked for it, he was so ashamed to even bring it out, he quickly put a newspaper around it and gave it to me. That showed me that although in the great big city I live in, pads are seen displayed in every store, in villages it is treated with pure disgust and shame. In my thoughts, the main possibility of overcoming this is by having the leaders of the country respect this and encourage the general public to do so as well. Recalling that in 2019, our now opposition leader was running for presidency, how his, how his idea to provide free sanitary napkins to all women was highly criticized by the general public in a negative manner, which was very sad me. One of my male friends shared with me a time he was on a project and came across stories of how girls use cloths and newspapers because they couldn't afford pads and said that he never understood the depth of it until then. And as I shared this with my brother who takes care of me during my period, I saw in his face too genuine concern. And it is then I realized how the lack of education within society is one reason to all these causes. In Sri Lanka, talking about menstruation is very rare. Even in schools, if I go to the sick room with unbearable cramps, I would be sent back with a Panadol because it's just my period. Sex education, how our bodies work, is hardly spoken about as it is shamed upon. And I have seen many people make unreversible mistakes just because they really didn't know. I see on society some prominent characters coming up talking about it more and creating awareness within boys and girls and teaching them the absolute raw facts of truth. And all I hope for my country is that it spreads to every corner of it and a society of men respecting women and women doing the same to men is seen. As I spoke to you all today, you might have realized that I am a bit too privileged. And yes, I agree. I see myself as one that is very privileged. But what we do and what we learn from these privileges it is what matters. I hope to pursue my dreams and interests in life, to be an example to all women of my nation to do so as well. I hope to spread awareness, not mainly in the modern cities, but in the rural areas of my paradise island.
and I hope that from me speaking up like this, someone out there in this little world of ours gathers up the courage to do the same as I did. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dileka, for your insights on the topic. And yes, I do find it quite agreeable that the lack of awareness is indeed the problem for many social stigmas prevalent widely in today's society and how this mentality deprives many aspiring women of their opportunity, um, as well as the negative impacts that it leaves on the young minds of boys. And you had knit together all these sensitive topics so well. So thank you, thank you so much. So let's set the, set the stage for our next and final planned list of the day. Chaitra from Belladi. Chaitra is a 10th grader who's a natural leader with a simple demeanor. She carries her responsibilities with her heart and has good communication skills. Now over to Shetra, let your colors explode. Thank you, Mumita. A very pleasant afternoon to everyone here. I am KM Chaitra from Bellari, studying in St. Philomena's Composite Peer College. God has created everyone in a unique way for a special purpose. He made us with absolute perfection without any flaw. But we humans, out of our selfish ambitions, have made the society selfish and we have imbalanced God's creation. I, being a girl from India, which is a male-dominating society, would like to share my thoughts. Many times we would have seen and heard that women being treated unjustly in our daily life. For example, women earning more than her husband would be restricted to go to work, as this may lower the husband's identity and the position. Nowadays, Girls are given education, but as they attain menstruation age, they are considered as burden to some families. Uneducated, unemployed women are looked down in the society. The changes that a girl undergoes when she attains menstruation are both physical and emotional changes. But regarding these changes, there are many myths and taboos in the world. And some of which I have come through are pimples are a result of being unclean, using tampons will break my hymen. Most famous one is period or menstrual grudges impure. No, menstruation is completely natural and biological process. But scientifically speaking, menstrual discharge doesn't contain any toxic components in it. It is just the uterus or the womb shedding its lining. And taboos like girls shouldn't touch plants, water plants, or shouldn't even touch pickles and thus the girls don't even enter kitchen. All these myths make a teenager feel that she's not normal and menstruation is not a normal process. Added to these, her physical appearance also changes and due to which she's subjected to hear the word size zero from her peers. What is the size zero? It basically means the smallest size of women's clothing. Not me, but many teenagers want to have size zero just for the sake of others' comments. Commenting, judging someone due to their physical appearance is body shaming. Humiliating someone by giving or mocking critical remarks about their physical appearance make them feel depressed and lowers their confidence too. For example, one of my friend, she was healthy and got humiliating comments from others and due to which she started her diet plan. Due to that, no proper intake of supplements was there and which led her to be hospitalized. Like this, many people start dieting to attain size zero. The young girls who need strength and immunity will tend to become weak during their dieting, affecting their health too. After knowing things happening to girls and women, there is one question that surely arises. Is there any legal law or right to stop or punish these things happening to us? Yes, there are. Like bodily autonomy, sexual health care, sexual and reproductive rights, through which we can protect ourselves and raise our voices. 
Now let me tell about myself, my personal experience on how did I undergo or what are the situations that I underwent when my first attained menstruation. Now this might sound like too much of information to, to, us, to us, but frankly speaking, it's been two years that I attained my first menstruation and since then my life has changed. There are many restrictions that I was put on into, but I followed only those which I could really do. In the beginning, I was afraid and shy to even share things with my mom as well. I didn't like myself due to this process, and, but slowly things changed. Now I have understood, got adjusted, I can freely speak as well as I'm doing right now. This might not happen only with me, but to many girls in this world. The things changed according to me only when the families we live in allow us to do so. In India, where people think that speaking about such topics is shameful, awful, and awkward. In a country like India, where people blindly believe in ancient and religious traditions, few of their mindsets will not change in favor of girls and women. In India, girls and women are seen as just an object or an item for pleasure and satisfaction. In my eyes, women should get much more respect and dignity. The future should never face any of the challenges I and us did, like physical and emotional trauma, mental torture, inferiority complex too. The next generation should have a wide and a broad way of thinking to have a society that's based on equality. We all need that, right? Society based on equality. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitra. That was quite an interesting piece on myths and taboos that women face in their day-to-day -day living spaces. And yes, we must inculcate in our younger generation that much needed uh, space to develop a wide and broad way of thinking to have a better society that is based on equality. And yes, we all do dream of an equal society someday in the future. So thank you, Chaitra. And I'm sure that you all have some questions in the brewing. Please free to enter them in the uh, link of the Google Doc that has been left in the chat box. So, but first, I have some questions for the first, uh, for our panelists. The first question is to Dileka. In your speech, you had mentioned that you, both you and your brother were brought up in an atmosphere where equality was a given. What, according to you, are the effects if the same wasn't prevalent? So, in my point of view, if you are brought up in a in a family where you're told to told that you have to be in the kitchen always, you have to be cooking, you have to know to clean, and so on and so forth, even though you are so talented, you have so much of potential to succeed and go to heights that you never imagined you can. Your mindset is always a girl's mindset will always be that. I have to look after my family. I have to be there for my children. I have to always be cooking in the kitchen, washing the clothes and so on and so forth. And I think that's something that actually is effective on a lot of girls, uh, women who are parents now, who I think can can definitely balance their family back, family and work lifestyle and who has so much potential, but is not going for it because that's just not their mentality. And it does affect boys as well because they've also been brought up, they have sisters saying that, okay, you can stay, but your sister has to do this. And as they grow up, for them to support their wives to go and do their best in their life and like achieve their goals, they don't have that mentality in them. That is what I see is greatly affected from not having that background. So I'm very grateful for what I have. Uh, very well said. Thank you so much. Our next question is for Chetra. According to you, what kind of a society would we have if everyone were informed and fully aware about bodily autonomy? If bodily autonomy was known by everyone and if it was considered as right, then I think in this society, girls and women would have more power than what we are having right now. 
or i can say that girls and i mean men and women both have equal part in the society as i mentioned before we need a society that's based on equality due to which girls and women can raise their voices against injustice happening to them legally bodily autonomy will help them to stand for themselves as it is governance of our own body and control ourselves the change in the society will be visible clearly when it is being considered as a right thank you sir once again i'd like to thank all of the panelists today for their discernment on the topic and yes with all of your thought provoking discussions we were surely enlightened with all that was discussed today now over to sanjana to give uh, to take us through the rest of the panel yes huge big hurray to all the panelists congratulations because all of you were so good and um all of you spoke out so bravely with so much courage and now we will be moving on to the question session so um there have been a lot of questions that were coming in in through the chat box or through the comment section on youtube and we have with us jill who's a teacher in st bridget school philippines who wonderfully shapes molds and inspires young minds every day over to you jill for the questions thank you for that sanjana so hi everyone we're back again for some couple of questions so to be guided of course by sanjana and bonita okay my fir the first question that we got is for you what is self love and girl empowerment so i repeat for you what is self love and girl empowerment do we have any takers on that question you can feel free to just unmute yourself and go ahead yes moksha um i think um in in my opinion uh self love and specifically uh, a girl's empowerment would be to be able to voice out exactly what you think regardless of the circumstances that you are in um not having to be a, a certain person around your friends and a certain person at home regardless of the consequences i am going to be me and ensuring that a woman has that sort of surroundings would be uh, the pinnacle of uh, a girl's empowerment in my opinion very young people thank you we have any very rightly said yes sophia i think self love is most important we just removing the mask that we usually put on in front of everybody else and sophia yes i agree with moksha definitely with all her points and i'd also like to add that i think self love is also self respect and self respect comes loving yourself and just going on be yourself thank you yes very true sophia i think that's the advice that we all get just to be ourselves and we can only respect others when we respect ourselves and our own bodies would anybody else like to answer that question or should we move on to the next question Jill I think okay um Jill I think we can go to the next question. Okay for a second question what are menstruation myths in your country and how did that affect you Okay I will repeat what are menstruation myths in your country and how did that affect you Do we have any takers to that question Yes Shweta go ahead there are many myths and taboos as a few i have mentioned before that is using tampons will break hymen hot water bath during periods will lead to heavy flow of the blood and that's the reason in many countries i mean even in india taking bath is not allowed but even in the same country the india taking bath head bath i mean the shower and the first day of menstruation is compulsory feel free to unmute yourself and speak um in sri lanka also if i uh, say 
when you come of age in the villages, as I said, there's these myths that if you look at boys, it'll be it'll not be good on you. And if you if you um, if I say that the time and the date it happens, they check it and they check their times, and that will be something that will decide whether that girl's future will be bright or whether whether it will not be that great. And those are some things that ten-year-old girls go through, ten-year-old, ten, twelve girls in villages go through, and I think that is very hard for us to even understand that that mentality is put into girls at such a young age. Very well put, Tulika. Thank you. Yes, Sophia. It's also. I think it's also the same in the Philippines. With the uh, if you use tampons or menstrual cups, it's going to break your hymen, and you're no longer going to be a virgin. And I think it's a bad thing to. I think it's a bad misconception because it really it doesn't give us choices to to experience our periods depending on how we want it to be. And I think it's important to educate us more so we could have options and be more and to just know more. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. I think it's interesting that no matter what background or what country we're from, there are always these myths surrounding our menstruation. And it's also quite sad that so many women and girls aren't sure whether it's really a myth or it's true. So I hope that we can all be informed one day and inform others as well. Um, Jill, I think we can move on to the next question. The third question is also related to menstruation. So how do you think talking about menstruation can be normalized in every gender? So this means boys and girls talking about it, men and women talking about it. So how do you think talking about menstruation can be normalized in every gender. Yes, Shaitra, go ahead. Yes, As this question is raised, I feel very good that it was a good question. And the answer to this I would like to give is, first, in the family, they should feel free to speak about this so that we have knowledge, so that we also have the general information that is actually observed as a taboo in our society. To make it generalized, we should have a free conversation with our parents, family, and relatives first. Obviously, we do it with our friends, though. We should have it first at our families. I think it is. Um, can you go ahead? Yes, Mopcha. Um, so I think um, even if, uh, I, I, uh, I only know that very few families do have this, as Chaitra said, very few families are actually open to discussing this. But um, I think something that can be done um, in schools is to reduce this warped sense of modesty that we have. You know, girls are always considered more modest when we don't talk about these things. And when we don't talk about, only we can tell guys what our experience is, right? We can't leave it to their imagination. They should hear it from us. They shouldn't, shouldn't be hearing it from the internet. I should be able to tell my guy friends what I'm going through as a menstruating girl. So we need to stop considering it as modest to not talk about your private parts and not talk about menstruation. And we should also make sure that guys um, aren't told that they are more masculine for ignoring it, because that's something we absolutely do even to this day. So I think we should start with that. Thank you, Moksha. Very, very well said. Would anybody else like to add to that? Very well. And um, I do feel that whether it comes to gender equality or menstruational equity, it cannot completely achieve its goal when there's only half of the world population that's only us girls fighting for it. We need men, we need young boys to join that fight as well. Thank you, Jill. We'll move on to the next question. All right. Our next question is directed to lawmakers or policymakers. Right? So what do you say to lawmakers or what would you advise lawmakers for, the, for them to promote girls' rights, especially sexual and reproductive health and rights. Okay, I repeat, what do you say or what would you advise lawmakers 
for them to promote girls' rights, especially sexual reproductive health and rights. Yes, Moksha. Yes, go ahead, Moksha. Um, okay, so I think we all know that there is a, a global shift to the right, as we can put it, or uh, there is conservatism running rampant wherever we go, whether it's India or the US or Poland. Um, I think uh, something that we need to, as the younger generation, something that we need to keep in mind is regardless of our political affiliations or our parents' political affiliations, um, regardless of who we consider ourselves loyal to, our rights and our uh, health is the priority. At the end of the day, um, what we, I think, um, as an Indian, someone in uh, Th Tamil Nadu, which is going for elections, something that I think we can do is Google up the um, uh, people who are running for our constituency. What is their stand on women's rights? What is their stand on reproductive rights? Uh, because I know that there are politicians who have said that, uh, you know, women who get murdered for, re uh, murdered for uh, rejecting a man, rejecting a man's proposal deserved it. And those politicians are still prominent in my country. So we need to Google up these people, show the responses to our parents and say, tomorrow, if I am in that situation and somebody murders me, would you, this man is going to say that exact thing about me. Is that okay with you? So I think that's something that we should and we can do. Thank you, Moksha. I think it is so important that we take a stand in our uh, the political situations of our country from a young age. So as to see an equal society in the future, I think that's very true. Do we have any inputs on that answer? Yes, Shatra. Though there are many laws and rights for women, that is sexual rights and reproductive rights, the implementation or the awareness of the rights are not properly given to each and every one of us. There is only a part which we have known and there is so much dark part which we don't know, which we are not aware of. So the lawmakers or the politicians should make it a point to implement those rights or give education to girls on this, uh, what are their rights and what are their laws that can help them. So not much of the girls in the world know about these rights and laws. I would like to bring awareness to such girls and educate them in order to have a good uh, use of this laws and rights. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitra. Thank you, Chaitra. Chill, I think we can move on. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Sophia, please, please go ahead. I definitely agree with Chaitra that it, I mean, it does exist. We have laws about sex education and the implementation of it, but is it being implemented properly? Like, are girls actually being properly taught about sex education or even boys? And I think we should, I think lawmakers should focus on it more. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also think, like like all of them said, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ตัวเนี่ยมาไล่ก็อูอูตะโชซุซีเยจ้าลูกชีอารมณ์อาจารย์แพทย์เรียนรีโซลูชันมาเนาะเอ่อตะโชอารมณ์อูบะเนเนป
that that is something that the government as like as a as the leaders of the country that's something that they can definitely take care of just to make sure that everyone is comfortable and has free sanitary products and you know um they can choose whatever they want to like they, there are so many options out there but in sri lanka it's just pads that are used mostly so i think um in that way the laws can be changed in so many ways in my country to make sure that the girls have a better future thank you dilika thank you i think everybody had answered that question and that shows how informed and um, empowered all of you are as young girls so yeah to that and jill do we have another question yeah we actually have two more questions okay so the next question is how do you take care of yourself and how can you encourage girls to do the same okay so how do you take care of yourself and how can you encourage girls to do the same kokoko yo dimushia me tinya iso outa ya me jama isa sha ya me aka i te me te chini so me tu me chini ne ka sa me english speaking ni le ta me bo no ta ba wa ta wo ji thai thai bo twa tri sa ri bo e e twi lo bi ro bo thai thai me te cha me clear ri pa wo la bo kha na ku ku ye kha na ku kha na ku ji e ku kha na ku ne ka ba ji bo sa sha bo twa tru phai kho me so i will Uh, to become an increased self confidence i will continue my study take care of my physical health singing dancing playing with friends practice english speaking uh, making recycle bags i will take care of the earth and invite all the girls take care for the self and the earth thank you very well said helen and so taking up so many questions that's really nice so self care is key here Do we have any more answers? Yes, Mokhya, go ahead. Uh, no, one second. Uh, Chaitra, please go ahead. In India, many women think that serving their husbands or the family members is most prominent for them. But, however, I think that taking your self-care first is the most important and prominent as when you are healthy, you can take care of your family. Strengthen yourself, always keep yourself hydrated, don't have any mood swings, though there will be few, but try to control them and as well as keep it calm and soft when you are doing any of the kinds don't do any like there are myths that you shouldn't do exercise during menstruation but if you want a healthy and a good uh, health care then you have to just make a little warm up i suggest this that's amazing advice chacha thank you do we have no um I think um while one dimension of it is taking care of your body I think my internet is uh, kind of shaky if I'm not wrong can you hear me Yes we can hear you clearly No you you're audible you go on So um one dimension is obviously to take care of your body uh, as Chaitra said exercising and having uh, good food and all of those things i think um, the other dimension is taking care of a woman's mental health specifically and i think it differs um, for a woman to take care of her mental health in a patriarchal society because you most of indian women are uh, you know are in a constant state of being dominated in a constant state of being um, put down right and um, um i think in my opinion and my own uh, personal experience sharing your story helps so much um i i was diagnosed with a, a condition called pcod and it's it's a very simple thing one in 10 teenage girls have pcod it's not a big deal at all but um uh, i was never taught what pcod is and the second i googled it um the internet told me that i'm infertile and i got so scared and i got so i was paralyzed for a few seconds because i i was so um so extremely scared 
but sharing my story and going from class to class in my school and telling them hey this is what pcod is it's completely fine if you have it it's completely fine if you have irregular periods <laughs> that <laughs> um that helped me a lot and so uh, regarding can you ask everybody to mute yourselves so as to not cause any disturbance go ahead please <laughs> yeah so um what i'm trying to say is whatever your story is the second you share it and the second people learn from it you'll feel so much better about yourself and everything that you've been through thank you moksha thank you for having the courage and making people feel comfortable with the theory as well yes dilika go ahead yeah i think everyone said what i'd say but there's something i do is as a girl as a little girl i see that not every you don't get the same uh, priority some other people get when you're like going for the best you know when you're going to read something how you don't get prioritized as much and what i always do is i just listen and i take it in without trying to uh, get into it but like i stay in the corner and listen and take everything in the small messages the small things that happen in life are very important i think as a girl to like go you have to go you have to climb the ladder up to make the change so to climb up i think you have to like take in the simple things into your life and try to fare best thank you dilika very well put yes sophia sophia you're on mute apologies i wasn't able to unmute myself um i definitely agree on mental health and on physical health because personally i'm actually hard on myself like i'm like my standards for myself are higher so this is where i say that i think it's very important to know when to rest rest is very important and don't it it would sound weird but don't be too hard on yourself because you, anything you do there would be progress and knowing that is just very reassuring it just that's it thank you thank you sir Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. I hope that with all the answers that we've got, you all take care of yourself a little better from now on because we all deserve that little self-care and that self-love. So we have the next Should question. Should we go on to the next question? All right, so this would be our last question. All right? So we will be talking about social media again. So how can we use social media to be beneficial to girls especially in the context of bodily autonomy sexual and reproductive health and rights okay so how can we use social media to be beneficial to girls especially in the context of bodily autonomy sexual and reproductive health and rights yes moksha go ahead um i i'd like to tie this in with one of the previous questions uh, regarding um lawmakers um something that i've i've been seeing as a trend in my uh, country is um you have all these extremely powerful people like the chief justice of india or you know high ranked politicians passing absolutely unscientific and prejudiced remarks about women um and something that has happened uh, through social media in fact is uh, the public outcry against these prejudices of uh, these officials that has in fact led them to make public statements and um, even if they aren't um, directly apologizing for their ridiculous behavior they they know that there is some consequence to their actions or to their words so i think we can use social media to hold people accountable and uh, you also see that every time a girl or a, um, a transgender personality or a woman personality uh, puts on something in social media you have these remarks that are Uh, specifically uh, discriminatory based on their gender and i think something that people can do is it, it's going to take you 2 minutes to write a reply saying hey 
you're being ridiculous please stop okay that it's going to take you 2 seconds to do that please do that because that's going to make that person feel better they know that they have support right so feel free to support other people on social media because we really need it all of us need each other so yeah very well said empowered women empower women thank you do we have any more answers to that question yes chaitra go ahead exactly said moksha but another one more thing that we could do is usually in the world there are many tweets or some random things going on that are so viral nowadays so this will uh, the news which we are getting through uh, the social media is very quick and fast through which we can just forward these messages that there are rights that we can focus on there are our uh, complete whole and soul rights which we have since our birth and this cannot be denied by anyone these are few messages that can be forwarded or that can be put forth in social media which too can become viral as well that's thank you chaitra yes sophia uh you're on mute i'm really sorry i'm still unable to unmute myself um i definitely agree with both chaitra and moksha and i'd also like to bring up what moksha said in the earlier from the earlier questions that sharing your story is very important and social media is a definitely a good place to start sharing your story and like having panels participating in panels like the like these that's being currently shared live on youtube is definitely important to spread awareness and to let knowledge be shared amongst girls thank you sophia thank you sophia that is so true because we've seen through movements like the me too movements when women share their stories of being sexually abused how women can support other women and how we can hold each other up just like we're doing today right now together so um i think that is the end of the questions and i am i i truly am in awe of how informed and how well read all of you are so thank you again and i will i'm i will now be calling upon treza ma'am to share her comments on this panel Hello everyone. I am not sure what else I can add on after hearing all of you share just now. It's it's like so awesome. It's mind blowing. I just wish that when I was growing up in school, I had such friends that you know we could share so openly and demystify the whole concept of menstruation and uh, to talk about body shaming in such an open way and to empower each other. You know, as girls growing up. um i just want to commend all of you for breaking open this taboo and of speaking out loud like this i just hope that all the teachers of your schools and all those who are responsible for educating your minds and shaping you as young women are listening in on this session and if they're not listening in on this session we will give them the youtube link so that they can watch the video after this we need to revamp our education system so that it is open enough to be able to shape the minds of young women and girls like you um to be productive and to be um equally empowered people in society i just want to uh, just have this reaction as i was hearing you speak you have all mentioned across the board how important it is to have good sex education to actually understand our bodies as as a female you know as as women and as girls and to understand what happens at each developmental cycle of our bodies and also to be able to share what happens to us with the larger family system with the brothers with our men with the uh, fathers who are within our family immediate family our relatives and um the communities that we come from 
one person shared and I, more than one person shared just now about the role of duty bearers. And I just want to consolidate all your sharing in, and capture it in this um, Beijing, Beijing platform where we have section L, which is just focused on the girl child. For those of us who say that our countries need to be implementing the laws, I challenge you and I affirm what you say, because if your country has signed on the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, of which they are bound to section, uh, section L of the Beijing platform, where which has nine particular sections to it, I want to just read these nine sections to you. And as you listen to me speak about these nine sections, just gather all your sharings today and just put them into these bullet points and you will see that they all fit in all the nine sections. So if your country is a signatory to the CEDAW, you have a voice of bringing your duty bearers, your lawmakers, and making them aware that they have a duty to implement what their country has rectified, your country has rectified. So I'm going to read this um, L, uh, L platform of the, uh, of the um, Beijing uh, agreement. And as I read this, just reflect on your sharings. Number one, eliminate all forms of discrimination against the girl child. Number two, eliminate negative cultural attitudes and practices against the girl child. Most of you have shared about the taboo, the taboo of menstruation, of how society looks at a girl who is menstruating and having her period. So number two says to eliminate negative cultural attitudes. Number three, promote and protect the rights of the girl child and increase awareness of her needs and potential. Can you just imagine? We have 26,000 girls in Sri Lanka. I don't know how many thousand students we have in the Philippines, in India, in Indonesia, and in different parts of Asia Pacific where Good Shepherd is present. Can you just imagine if all of us promote the rights of the girl child by educating the girl child of her rights and her bodily autonomy and the governance that she has over her own reproductive sexual uh, rights. How great that would be. Number four, eliminate discrimination against girls in education, skills development and training. Who says that there is a glass ceiling for women? There's a glass ceiling for girls. Let's break that glass ceiling. Number five, eliminate discrimination against girls in health and nutrition. All of you have just shared how even um, asking for a you know for, for menstruation pad, how the men themselves are embarrassed and they wrap it in the newspaper and they pass it on to us. How do we demystify and break this myth? Number six, eliminate the economic exploitation of child labor and protect young girls at work. In the first panel discussion, we heard about girls thinking about needing to go back to work to to contribute to the household income because of the impact of COVID-19. How many of us uh, also know about girls who have had to go into early marriage because they were not aware of their bodily functions and their own reproductive um, processes that, go through the, that they go through? Number seven, er eradicate violence against the girl child. Number eight, promote the girl child's awareness of and participation in social, economic, and political life. All of you here in advocating for the girl child today are participating in that social life of a girl child. And if we are able to raise the girl child in the way that the girl child's rights are fulfilled and are met, can you imagine how empowered women all of you will be? and your families and the communities, the society and the country that you belong to. And number nine, and all of us are responsible for this, number nine, strengthen the role of the family in improved status of the girl child. How do we as educators, I hope all the teachers are listening to me, yeah? how are we as educators reaching out to the parents and the family of each girl child that's in our school system to educate them about the rights of the girl child, to break the taboos that affect the girl child, 
and to demystify this whole thing about the menstruation cycle as the as all of you said let's put a period to the period okay and i want to end this summary of mine uh, with a paragraph from our very own position paper is paragraph three and that paragraph states when the value of girls is recognized when their needs are met and their voices amplified girls contribute to positive change in their families local communities nations and the world so to every girl here and each girl here you rock really you rock and let's all put on our videos and our cameras again and i'm going to put on gallery view let's all give a round of applause to our girls put on the reactions you know encourage them what more can we say if all of you are so empowered there is hope in the future go girls go thank you so much trees and mom i have this whole new energy within me now and i'm so happy or i should rather say joyful and um so it's it's very easy for us sometimes to feel small and insignificant and um uh, unca- incapable of change but today we change that because now i feel more powerful i feel more strong and um it's it's not just trees and mom and that's just because of all the panelists here we have today i think you all are the most important people here and i love how trees and mom brought out how the voices of the panelists was relating to the beijing agreement and to our position papers and how everything just connects beautifully we're all so different yet we're all here together and i had beautiful flashbacks from our international day of the girl child campaign that we had um in october from october to december what lovely times we've had together and with that being said i would now like to invite um sister winifred de hoti our a representative at the united nations to share her thoughts with us well is it afternoon in asia yes <laughs> um because it's um uh, 5:30 in the morning am uh, in new york uh, so this has been my night vigil <laughs> but what a vigil it has been Uh, what can I say? Congratulations to each and every one of you. And you're on this panel uh, this evening, today, <laughs> whatever day it is, uh, because a, an annual meeting is taking place in New York, and that is the Commission on the Status of Women. And this uh, commission, uh, as I said, takes place every year. and it brings together the attention of the women of the world uh, on the platform that you are on now there are over 25000 women from around the world registered on this platform and participating over two weeks uh, together with the 193 member states and the issue for discussion has all to do about uh, women in a uh, role in decision making and in a uh, political life together with ending violence against women now it's always hugely um controversial uh, topic uh, csw the most controversial topic there is when it comes to member states mostly women men talking about women and women's bodies and they insisting that they have the right to tell us what to do so i uh, i couldn't feel more proud and more honored to have spent an, a night of vigil uh, with you to hear your voices in this year of 2021 speaking out so powerfully as girl children on behalf of girls and you are the future of the world and your voice your agency your participation your enthusiasm you're addressing and i heard this evening very painful moments as you made journeys through the covid times and we're still in covid 
very painful moments, questioning yourself, how are you feeling, feeling depressed, not knowing what you're doing, missing your friends, wondering, uh, even to how one's sleep can be affected. So you're making the journey through very difficult times. And it is a tribute to you to be on this panel this evening, today, uh, talking about your experiences. And Teresa said something about she wished she had all this when she was going to school. Well, I'm a year or two older than her, and I wish that I had all of this when I was going to school. Uh, and, uh, you know, so like it's, it's tremendous uh, that you're growing up and that you have such powerful teachers and models and indeed support in your families. Because even though some families can be difficult uh, and have their moments, and we all have them uh, in terms of living in family, uh, because there is that moment when you rebel against the authority, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, when we're told to keep quiet, keep out of sight, uh, what would you know about this? Uh, you know, that, but you have got over that. And you are, uh, you are the future, you are the political activists, you are the, uh, the civil society, you are the women of the future. And I have no doubt you will do great things uh, for yourselves, your own generation, and for girls coming after you. And I love the title of a book that has come out of uh, Asia. Uh, it was for the International uh, Women's Day on March 8th. And it says, not uh, in my mother's path. And I think you're living that because uh, your, your mothers, your fathers, um, those of us that are older, uh, we have a different mentality. And um, you have broken through that. And yes, social media has helped you to do it. And yes, uh, the COVID, if we did not have COVID, we would not be on this platform uh, today. Because uh, the COVID uh, experience in New York with the uh, civil society means we can't come together. We're all working from our homes, uh, from our um, wherever we live, uh, our apartments, that's where we're working from. And so as the civil society for CSW came together and said, how can we get over this? And they came up with this marvelous platform. And it was my joy to invite the whole of Good Shepherd World to participate in this platform. And you are the zenith, the height of that participation, the quality of your reflections, the depth of your pain, and the, the the uh, enduring um, resilient hope that you have uh, for yourself and for your country and for the world. And my heart and my prayer are with Maya Mar who are going through their own difficult moment uh, in terms of the political upheaval. Um, other countries have different other experiences, uh, but uh, together, together we can. And therefore, the title of your uh, conference, your platform moment, uh, Together We Can. Yes, together we can. You are the future. And my, you will, every one of you will be in my prayer. Uh, you are uh, the raison d'etre of my life. Uh, I can, uh, like uh, it says in the, in the scriptures, now you can let your servant go in peace for my eyes have seen. You know, uh, you, you are, you are the future. So congratulations to each one. Um, congratulations to your teachers, uh, your parents, your organizers. And to think that this is across so many countries and the seamlessness with which you uh, moderated one country to another, um, uh, just uh, tremendous, tremendous. So congratulations, thank you very much and uh, blessings on you all. And as for our fearless leader, uh, Teresa Simmons and Sashi, where would we be without you? Um, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sister Winifred. It means so much to us, just you being here with us 
so early in the morning for you. Um, we thank you for your words of encouragement and we hope that we continue to do what we do. So thank you to everybody. And unfortunately, the, the second panel discussion has come to an end and it does hurt me to say that I wish we could go on forever. So thank you again to all the panelists. Thank you to Jill for the questions. Thank you, Teresa, ma'am, and thank you, Sister Winnie Fred. And with that, I hand it over to the host for today. Thank you, Sanjana. Um, I am truly really out of words because um, I have a script prepared with me, but there is nothing I can tell that can actually um, show my, like express, I, that I can express my emotions with because seeing people, seeing the panels from panel one and panel two, I really, I really do feel so much more empowered now. And I actually feel like I can make change together. We actually can make change. And um, yes, thank you, uh, Ms. Triza, for wrapping uh, and summing up the panel discussion. And thank you, Sister Winifred, for um, empowering us and telling us that we can if we wanted to. So thank you so much. Um, Jared, you can take over. Once again, thank you to Sanjana and Mamita for leaving the panel and also to Ma'am Teresa and Sister Winifred for wrapping up the panel's thoughts and opinions. We are truly in awe of all the panelists. It takes great courage to speak out on such issues in today's society. We applaud all of you for speaking up and voicing out and portraying that if we truly want, together, we can accomplish great things indeed. We now have a video where we will hear the powerful voices of the girls from Indonesia who speak out on the topic of child marriage. Hai, namaku Aksela. Aku tinggal di desa Pesanggaran. Saat ini aku siswa kelas 9 SMP. Hai, namaku Aleng. Aku tinggal di desa Asam Besar. Saat ini aku siswa kelas 9 SMP. Hai, namaku Mursia. Aku tinggal di desa Teluk Batu. Saat ini aku siswa kelas 12 SMA. Hai, namaku Maria Eugenia. Aku tinggal di desa Randai. Saat ini aku siswa kelas 12 SMA. Kami tinggal di pedalaman Pulau Kalimantan, Indonesia. Kami berasal dari suku Dayak. Untuk masyarakat Dayak, berladang menjadi mayoritas pekerjaan di desaku. Sebagian lagi bekerja di kebun sawit milik perusahaan. Aku sangat bersyukur karena orang tuaku memberiku kesempatan untuk bisa sekolah sampai saat ini. Meskipun aku harus tinggal di asrama Suster Gembala Baik, jauh dari keluarga, tapi aku senang karena bisa belajar dan sekolah. Banyak anak seumurku di desaku yang tidak melanjutkan sekolahnya karena menganggap sekolah itu tidak penting. Beberapa anak perempuan di desaku mengalami kehamilan yang tidak dikendaki karena pergaulan bebas dan akhirnya mereka menikah di usia dini. Menurutku, pernikahan dini menyebabkan anak perempuan kehilangan kesempatan untuk meraih cita-cita dan impiannya. Karena perempuan juga punya peran penting dalam kehidupan masyarakat. Aku rasa anak perempuan yang menikah di usia dini juga belum siap menjadi ibu. Mereka terpaksa menjalankan peran dan tanggung jawabnya sebagai perempuan dewasa. Padahal mereka masih anak-anak. Secara fisik pun, alat reproduksi mereka belum berkembang sempurna apabila mengalami kehamilan. Setauku, kehamilan pada anak perempuan di usia dini dapat beresiko keguguran dan kematian ibu dan bayinya. 
Aku rasa karena mereka tidak sekolah, mereka tidak memiliki pengetahuan yang cukup tentang tubuh mereka. Mereka tidak paham, di usia dini tubuh perempuan boleh-boleh hamil karena alat reproduksi belum sempurna. Dengan menikah dan hamil di usia dini, sebenarnya anak perempuan kehilangan hak atas tubuhnya sebagai anak. Mereka kehilangan banyak kesempatan untuk menikmati masak anak-anak dengan bebas. Aku merasa sedih dan prihatin dengan situasi ini. Aku berharap teman-teman seumurku, khususnya perempuan di desaku, menyadari pentingnya sekolah sehingga mereka akan memperoleh pendidikan yang cukup. Menurut pendapatku, dengan menyelesaikan sekolah hingga SMA, maka pernikahan dini dapat dicegah. Sebagai anak perempuan, kita punya hak untuk menentukan masa depan kita, untuk menggapai cita-cita kita. Jangan sia-siakan kesempatan untuk sekolah. Bersama kita bisa menghentikan pernikahan dini. Hearing the girls' voice, their thoughts on such issues was indeed inspiring. Wasn't it, Fatima? Surely was. Uh, seeing all of them speak out, and I'm just feeling so empowered today. And uh, you know, all of our voices and hearing all of us speak on various issues, really, I'm feeling so happy and empowered today. <laughs> I agree. And with that being said, it's now time for yet another kahoot. To put your listening and hearing skills to the test, I hand it over to Sanjana and Kat- Kadija to lead the kahoot. Over to them. Thank you, Jared and Fatma. We will now be taking over for an, for yet another kahoot. So I hope all of you remember how we went about the kahoot in the previous session, previous kahoot. So I hope you have another device ready, or you could use the same device. We will be posting the link for the Kahoot in the chat or in the comment section in YouTube. You can also join in um, or by going on Google and typing Kahoot and you will get a page where you can enter the game pin and enter the game. So make sure you tune in for I hope everyone's excited. Where's the number? Come on, get your competitive spirit on. And I hope you paid attention to the second panel discussion because most of the questions will be relating to the panel. It's time to give our brains a little work. And it's posted, so your game pin for the second Kahoot is 9124304. So I ask all of you to join in. Let's make it a very interesting game. The game pin again is 9124304. Oh, we have Super Leopard here already. I'm using mouse balance dog. We have quite some of these here too. Welcome. Hope you're ready for the game, everyone. We ask you to join in as quickly as possible. And in case you aren't able to join due to some unforeseen circumstances, you can always send in your answers through the chat box. Again, we have 56 of you here and 15 of you there. Well, all of you can join in. Join Why in, not all of you? Don't uh, miss out your seat. While that is going on, I'm reminding all of you again to drink some water and uh, refresh yourselves because that is very important.
17, 18. We have so many of you here. Please do join in, everyone. We will start when we have about 20 participants in the game, so make sure you catch your seat. We have just three more spots left, so make sure you join in as soon as possible. Okay, let's begin. Three, two, one, go. So the first question. Three, two, one, and we go for the first question. Which sustainable development goal does bodily integrity and sexual right come under? So if you had listened carefully to the panel, this was said. So I hope you know the right answer to this question. Come on, put your thinking caps on. If I'm not wrong, it was said in the very beginning of the panel. You have been listening. You passed with flying colors. Oh yes, the image is also a giveaway. Okay, and the correct answer is SDG 5 and SDG 3. And I think in total 14 of you got it correct. The Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the Global Goals, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty. So, according SDG to the vision 2030, there are 17 SDGs. SDG 3, that refers to good health and well-being. SDG 5, gender equality. SDG 7, which refers to affordable and clean energy. SDG 12, responsible for consumption and production. So obviously, SDG 3 and SDG 5 are the right answers. Moving on to the next question, question two. Which date is observed by the World Health Organization as Sexual Health Day? Is it September 4th, January 3rd, July 14th or February 10th? And no Googling, that's cheating. Make sure you don't cheat and Google the answers. <laughs> Isn't very fair. <laughs> and the right answer is September 4th. Let's see how many of you have gotten it right. Congratulations, Super Lovers. You're on top, followed by Mo Mountain Possum, Purple Egret. You can still catch up, so make sure you still. Answer as quickly as possible. Next question. The panel you've gotten will cover which of the following topics below. I hope every one of you is paying attention to it. And let's see how many of you get it correct. And people, please make a note. Count all the, your time also counts. So make sure you put in your answers quickly. I think this is quite an easy question. Um, but I should say self-acceptance of one's body was slightly discussed. So I don't blame you if you had put in the third option. But 14 of you got it right. Got it right. So congratulations. We will see the scoreboard again. Super Leopard is maintaining her his or her position on the board. That is great. The mountain possum is has the highest answer streak of three. Wow. Let's go to the next question. In which country did activists organize petition in March challenging depth of education to eradicate period poverty? I'm sorry, it's the Department of Education to eradicate period poverty. Was it Italy, was it USA, Canada or France? And it was the United States of America. And only one of you got it right. <laughs> I hope you all are keeping up with the news. And it was the United States of America where activists organized um, a protest for period poverty. Super Leopard still up there. 
tough round. What is period poverty? We have a small clip. Something to inform you all about to do period poverty. Is spread her wings and find a nice vulva to hug. Terry the tampon is also sad. She longs to be inserted in a warm and cosy place for a few hours, well, no longer than eight, and do her job. No strings attached. But Sally and Terry have a problem. They're just so bloody expensive. Someday, the duo hope they can be free for those who need them most. <laughs> that was nice. I hope all of you did learn something new from the Kahoot as well. Um, so I hope you all are aware of what period poverty because it is such a global issue and it is very relevant, especially in countries like ours. So can we move on to the next question? How many, How many girls, girls and women around the world lack basic access to menstrual products and hygiene? Your options are 1.2 billion, 2.3 billion, 1 billion and 4 billion. The options in them in itself are shocking to know that so many girls and women around the world lack basic access to menstrual products and hygiene. I think it's very, very important for us to know. 1.2 billion girls around the world don't have access to menstrual products and hygiene. And at this point, I would also like to add that uh, please do not scribble or annotate on the screen when it is being screen shared. We will look at the scoreboard. Super Leopard still keeping up her position, closely followed by Expert Cheetah, Mountain Possum, and we have a poll. Menstrual products should be given free of cost. What do you think? Yes, absolutely. No, yes, at a subsidized cost, maybe. What do you think? Feel free to put in your opinion. There is no right answer. It's just your opinion that we are asking. For. 47% of us here today think it's absolutely necessary that menstrual products should be given free of cost. 40% uh, 40, 40 of us think at a subsidized cost. 13% of us think no, and maybe, nobody thinks maybe, you know, we're all level-headed, we know whether we want it or whether we don't. All right. I think oh, this yeah. is... The, 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 huge shift in, the huge shift in how bodies are being represented in the media and in society through social media is gone. So, this is a movement. Whether it's self love movement, self acceptance movement, body positivity movement, or gender fluidity movement. Body positivity movement was the right answer. And let's see, nine of us got it right. Like we had discussed, it's nice to know that women now support each other. We normalize things such as body hair, we normalize. Um, that we are all of different sizes, of different colors. And it's nice to know that we are standing up against society's beauty standards. Super Leopard, Super Leopard is still on the top. And the last question for the day is bodily autonomy or human rights? Yes or no? I think this was also quite a simple question. Yes, I'm so glad to... And you're delighted to know that all of you have listened to the panel very well and nobody says no. Everybody knows that bodily autonomy is a human right and it's very important for all of us to know that it is a human right. We have Mountain Possum in the third place. And a winner of the day, Super But indeed, Super. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time as we did hosting it for all of you. So we will continue. We will move on to the session. So over to the hosts. Thank you. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. That was fun. Thank you, Sanjana and Khadija for conducting the Kahoot. Fatima, I think we have been sitting for quite some time again, aren't we? Yes, so we surely have, Jared. All of you know what that means. Time to move around and stretch ourselves again. It's time for some Jerusalem. Woo! 
I'm excited. <laughs> I love the song. <laughs> Jerusalem, I call on me. Kilo no lo sé. Uh, I'm ben ami. Zuma mi shila na. Jerusalem, I call on me. Kilo no lo sé. Uh, I'm ben ami. Zuma mi shila na. Jerusalem <laughs> Still was stretching around helped all of you and I'm sure feeling refreshed again. As we move ahead now, um, as we near the end of our session today, this last video which we will play now is a fusion of dance, music, skits and an overall visually pleasing and euphonious culmination of the various diverse countries and places from where we have connected together as one today. So I now invite all of you to sit back and enjoy the video.
All right. Thank you uh, for sharing that video. Um, that was truly wonderful, wasn't it? The fact that we as one managed to come together and portray an image of togetherness and unity makes me believe that together we can undoubtedly bring about monumental change. It's surprising to think we've almost come to the end of our event. But don't leave your seats just yet, because we have with us one of the most scintillating stars of Good Shepherd here to perform for us, a student from Good Shepherd, Chennai, India. She is a brilliant composer, songwriter, and singer whose song was also selected by the United Nations for their campaign for the International Day of the Girl. Presenting to you our very own Smriti Sasikumar, along with her sister Smita on the violin, singing an original song on challenging fears and standing together. Do let me know if you'll be able to hear the audio. Sorry, Smriti. Yeah, thank you. your perfect self at all your clothes <laughs> don't fit or maybe you're just five feet tall or maybe you like to cry a lot or you might be too bold maybe you're too shy or you might speak a lot breaking rules or going by all that it taught no matter who you are or you do they always find fault in you facing shame for being who you wanna be facing shame for seeing what they'll never see a future where you see yourself empowered like queens on a throne together not alone choose to challenge all of your fears dare to dream amidst all the tears to Together we can brighten the future, the power, the strength in our nature. Together we can fight battles and set ourselves free. We're too good to be sorry for being who we want to be. In a future where we see ourselves empowered like queens on a throne together, not alone. Choose to challenge all of your fears, dead and dream. Together we can fight battles and say 
Thank you so much, Smriti. You sang it better than any of us could have ever said it. I hope everyone here has indeed realized we're stronger when we're together in a future where we see ourselves empowered like queens on a throne, together, not alone. Our best wishes and prayers for you to continue doing what you do so incredibly well. I have been speaking since the beginning of this session. So I think it's time we take the back seat because it's finally time for the most important people here to voice out. Shifting your eyes to the various screens on Zoom wasn't necessary because it is you. Every single person who is here with us today is most valuable, just like our mother founder so fondly said. We request you to take part in a Mentimeter, a link to which has been posted in the chat box. We hope it is accessible to all. Yes, the link has been put now by Ms. Sashi and I hope it's accessible to all of you. Our question to all of you at the end of today's session is, how will you rank your understanding of gender equality at the end of this session? There are various options and we urge you to take your time and choose the option that best suits you. We would love to hear as many voices as possible and we now encourage you to share your thoughts about today's session after listening to young girls from various countries. I'm so glad to see I am energized after listening to this session as the first option that everybody's putting in. I know it can be quite tiring to sit five hours um, at the stretch on a Zoom meeting, but I am so glad to know that all of you are energized even after this. Uh, in, I mean, after everything that we have, that has been said and done, I'm so glad that all of you are energized. And the second option is, I know it's up to me to change the situation. And I'm sure it's up to each and every one of us. It's not just uh, you, it's not just me. It's up to every single one of us to change the situation. They understand the reality very well. Um, that's great that at the end of this discussion, we um, we could finally put together something where we, everybody could understand the reality of how our world is very well. That's something amazing. Thank you. And we're not going to let you go by just clicking on a few buttons in the Mentimeter. We want you to voice out. It is now your turn to speak up and we would love to hear about how your understanding has shifted and what the session means to you and what you have learned so far, your thoughts, your hopes for the future, anything at all, feel free to now unmute yourself and share with us. Or you can also use the chat box. You can use the chat box uh, or you can use the raise hand option to um, unmute and please go ahead. And uh, the uh, people watching on YouTube, you can use the comment section of the YouTube. Yes, uh, I can see Subia. She has her hand raised. Go ahead. Thank you for all the moderators for organizing this such a wonderful program. I am really very energized and have understand the meaning of girl child. What are her rights? What is the meaning of girl empowerment? And many other things. It opened my eyes. And I also was able to understand the reality of girls in this world. I'm very happy that I was a part of this session because I have gained a lot of knowledge by this wonderful session. Thank you. Thanks a lot for everyone for this wonderful, beautiful and knowledgeable session. Thank you. Thank you. I think Thanks. I there now, so you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, so good evening to everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank you all so much for organizing this. This is, first off, uh, 
I like to congratulate all the panel uh, people who participated in the panel discussions because it is so. Uh, it's actually mind blowing to know that people of my age are able to speak so much. Meaning they are my age also, but it's kind of hard to understand that they are so well informed. They know so much about their rights. They are able to speak out, which is very important. They don't just know it; they speak out, and it's very inspiring to know that you know, uh, people around us, you know, are also informed and it's very supportive. And I'm I'd really like to thank. the host everyone else who were involved behind the scenes also for organizing this because i think this went on amazing thank you thank smriti thank you so much smriti uh, and your song was wonderful uh, she's composed that song and she's an amazing singer and songwriter and uh, she's written the song she's come up with the lyrics the, the music everything and it's so beautiful uh, congratulations to smriti uh, i mean to you and your sister Thank you so much. In the chat, we have a response from Zen Matsui. Says, uh, "I'm going to gain the. I'm going to share the knowledge again from this meeting with my friends in her village, and I'm so happy to hear that it's important that we share everything that we learn. Thank you so much, Zen Matsui. We had a lovely time having you in the panel discussion as well. And uh, from Natanya Pereira, who says it was such an inspiring session, and all of you girls have really spoken about such." important issues and were not afraid to share your stories and hardships have really learned a lot from all of you that's another thing that i especially loved from the panel discussion was everybody was so honest in sharing their own stories it wasn't um just information that was put out there it was stories that were being shared and i think is in the panel discussion too we had discussed um it was brought up that sharing stories really empowers each other and it, it just brought, doesn't just empower yourself but also empowers the people who listen to your story so i'm so glad that there were so many stories shared here today uh, agusta has her hand raised please go ahead yo yeah, hi uh, i'm uh, agusta from sri lanka um uh, a teacher from st bridges convent uh personally i would like to mention one important thing that as a teacher who is teaching in a uh, uh, girl school um uh, i realized that um you know um that as teachers we have so much of responsibility especially after listening to so many sharing i mean uh from all around the world like you know from asia pacific region i personally felt how much of a responsibility we do have as teachers especially when we are given the opportunity to teach in a girls school so uh, i think that i would share with all my colleagues in school when i get back to school so i must thank everybody and especially girls for an awesome work so keep it up thank you god bless you thank you thank you so much agasta uh, we really appreciate it any more teachers or students uh, who would like to add in anything or or share your thoughts please do go ahead all right please come again yes yes all right yes chaitra yes. go ahead yeah hello mm. due to this session i have come to know things that are usually not spoken in around us and uh, very informative and we all girls come together from different nations different race different culture together we put in one word put in our one thought together like girls have complete like equal freedom as everybody does the whole the overall session was completely super organized and well executed i would like to thank all of them behind scenes as well as the people who executed it and myself thank you ဒီကြီးဆူတင်တဲ့ဟိုအလုံးမပြောရပြီးတဲ့ဒီလိုမိုပြောရဘူးဒီလိုမျိုးအခွင့်ရေးတွေမိတ်ခလေးတွေဟ
And I also gained a lot of knowledge from the sharing of others. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, just before we move on, I'm just breaking the orders and making sure that um, every girl is heard and every girl's voice is um, you know, put out on the forum. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our Good Shepherd sisters and um, our partners in mission from the Good Shepherd International Foundation. So thank you, uh, the sisters, for encouraging us and giving us this opportunity to put out a uh, to, sh to have a forum where we can all voice out and speak out uh, for uh, our thoughts and opinions. So thank you so much. Oh yes, I can see uh, Christina has her hand raised. Hi, hello. This is Christina from Rome, from the Good Shepherd International Foundation. I just wanted to say hello to everybody and how amazing you've all been. We have so much to learn from you. And I really hope this is just the first of a wonderful gathering. And I can bring to you really the, uh, the, the, the wonder of the rest of Good Shepherd International family. Um, and I really hope very soon, probably, uh, for the International Day of the Girl, the next one, we'll be able to have you join uh, other continents, girls from Africa, from Latin America, from the US, from Europe. This is what we can offer you, but you have so much to, uh, to offer to us. Today, you have shared um, something that is really inspiring and will push us forward. But I feel Teresa and I can almost, we're almost ready to retire probably and leave you the floor to bring forward this great, great mission. Thank you so much, girls. Thank you so much, ma'am. If I'm not wrong, I think I saw your daughter dancing with us uh, in the tombs of Jerusalem. Would she she like was. To... She was. <laughs> that was so amazing to see. Would she like to add a comment? I, I think she's really shy. She she needs to be inspired by you a little bit more. So I let her watch the whole video again and maybe the next round. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. And uh, like ma'am said, I hope that all of you know that this is just the beginning and may this be um, the, the reason for opening the gates to other continents as well. And maybe next session we could have girls from all around the world, all across the world, sharing with us and together with us. Would anybody else like to say something? Add their thoughts? Do feel free to unmute and go ahead, teachers, students. Sisters, anybody? You can also use the chat box and add your comments if you're a little shy. So, can I go on? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, I would say it's been an amazing session. I congratulate all of you who have spoken out and and you put forth your points so clearly and so powerfully. And I think that is one of the most important points that an empowered girl should have. And it's so amazing. I congratulate all the hosts, all the facilitators, and people from all the countries who have come today, spare their time and heard what we girls want to speak. And it, it so inspires us that we want to speak out more. And I, I, I literally don't have the words to express my thoughts right now. And I'm so happy it came out so well. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Khadija. Thank you so much. Uh, we will have uh, Zen Matwe as our last speaker and we will remember to close on time. Zen Matwe, you can take it away. Uh, we are not able, we're not able to hear. Yes, she said she, she's, uh, thank you very much for all of you here who are listening to her sharing today. Yeah. Minkley, 
But she is also realizing that a girl can do a powerful work to change her community, and she she will definitely do in her village. Thank you, Zen Matui. She is going to help all the girls in her village. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. And on that happy note, we have come to the end of this session. Or if I could rather say the only the if I could rather say the end of only the beginning. I ask you to settle into a comfortable position. We started off by centering ourselves, acknowledging our thoughts and presence and by being thankful. If I could request all of you to do the same right now, gently close your eyes and take in a few deep breaths. If I could ask all of you to hold your hands out together this way, if everybody on the screen could hold your hands out together like this. Thank you. Yes, no people, if you could join us, if you could just switch on your video for a few minutes and hold out your hands together this way, it would be lovely. Yes, more people, could we have more people joining in? In today's world, where people kill in the name of hate, people tell you that you don't deserve to live because of the way you feel. People tell you that you're disgusting because of your gender identity. People spread hate in the name of religion, the very message of which is to love. People can be hated the way they look, People can be hated for whom they love. People can be hated for their gender. People can be hated for the caste they were born into. And it's the same hate that people use to cover their hands, stained with innocent blood. We aim to heal the world. We aim to make it a better place. For you and for me and the entire human race. We as a family strive for love. We as young girls, women leaders, we strive for change. We aim for hope, goodness, peace, equality. And though it sometimes may seem impossible with the blessing of the Almighty, indeed, Together we can. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. And as I started out, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Sanjana. Dhaniwad. Thank you, Jared, for co-hosting with me. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Khadija, for co-hosting with us. Thank you, Monica, for co-hosting with me. Thank you, Isabel, for co-hosting with me. Sudhi, thank you, Fatima, for co-hosting with all of us. Thank you. And to all of you here, thank you for coming. Thank you for choosing to not be silent. Thank you for being one of those crazy few of us who think we can change the world. Because maybe, just maybe, together we really can. I had a lovely time being here, and I hope you did too. Thank you, everyone.